welcome back students to one more session of your uh, grade 11 CBSC syllabus so till now all these days I've been doing thermodynamics isn't it chemical thermodynamics so 90 nice should say 99.9% .9 of the syllabus have completed I try to pick up numericals from Bahadur chemistry I try to pick up numericals from different types I also did certain numericals based on JE advanced questions also because Gibbs free energy that concept is a compulsory concept in JE advanced exam right so with so many uh, videos uploaded I have kept it in the playlist. Please check the playlist. Right, all will be covered in that. Done. Thumbnails for different different concepts are also given clearly. Now, after that chapter, we'll go to a lighter chapter that is classification of elements and periodicity and properties. So, most of the students or most of the schools, I think, would have completed the first chapter, then gone to the second chapter. You'll be getting this chapter in the unit test also. So, most important thing which I'm going to tell you is whenever I do a chapter, you very well know I'll try to write the index. Done. Second important thing, the speciality of uh, this particular chapter is whichever concept I do in this chapter everything will be from JD Lee only that's the father of inorganic chemistry I'll be dealing every topic of this particular chapter that will be there and that will be there in combination of JD Lee now, all the concepts I'll be going to the core of the concepts all these trends I'll be doing it so let's see the chapter what what do we have in this chapter and to what extent I'm going to take you the journey will uh, will be there till now I've completed five chapters in grade 11 nine more chapters to go with every chapter I do, there will be some speciality in the chapter. Remember that. So, the first thing in periodicity and properties that is classification of elements and periodicity and property. The topic which we are going to learn is why do we classify elements? Why should we classify? What is the need of classification of elements? I'll be teaching you. Next important thing, Doberiner's triads and Newland octaves. Yes. So, this Doberiner's triads and Newland octaves, we, first important thing, you need to learn the definition. You need to pick up the example also. I'll be teaching both. What actually is Doberiner's triads and Newland octaves. From there, I'll be taking into a concept called modern periodic table. So, in modern periodic table, we'll be learning <coughs> what has Mendeleev given, what is Mendeleev postulates, as well as his whatever assumptions. We will also see what the limitations why did Mendeleev periodic law fail then comes uh, after Mendeleev Mosley's periodic law the periodic Mosley's periodic table is a modern periodic table where I'll be teaching you on what is a periodicity and what does it depend upon an academy the biggest online platform learning platform in India let's crack it I'm Vani Potepalli of the verified educator for grade 12 students CBSC ICSE as well as state board students are with me an Academy CBSE class 11 and 12 introduces Pen It Down Subjective Test Series. The link is given in the description and the series is going to start on 9th January 2021. Please go through the link and use my referral code. An Academy introduces Revisathon 2.0. It's a 5-day revision marathon series for classes 9 to 12. The starting date is 16 January to 20th January. So this particular competition is as mentioned. 12th Science, 12th Commerce, 12th Humanities, subjects and timings are given below. And for classes 10th and 9th, again subject and timings are given below. Please note that it's a 5-day session, revision marathon session students. So you can join it for free. And for 11th Science and 11th Commerce, subjects are mentioned, timings are also mentioned here. So 10 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. So, Revisathon 2.0. Note the date, students, 16 January to 20th January from 10 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. with the top educators. Please avail the chance. This, these are the Unacademy Plus subscription features where you have daily practice sessions, mock tests which are going on, live quizzes which will be going on, subjective test series coming soon. Join us. An Academy iconic subscription features include personal mentors. You have li live doubt clearing sessions. Weekly reports will be sent to the parents. Parent connect where the report will be sent to the parent and the educators are in contact with the parents too. A study planner is perfectly planned and all benefits of plus also will come under iconic subscription. This is a class 11 subscription. Don't forget to use my referral code that is Vani10 or Vani Life. This is the subscription rates you can go through. Rate 11 iconic subscription prices that is again money 10 money like note my referral code next comes your grade 12 subscription where prices are given you have an option of three months and six months 
please try to use the code Vani10 or Vani Life to get that 10% discount. Then comes the Great Truth Iconic subscription, six months, very less amount. So you can take that particular thing, use my referral code Vani10. From there, I'll be gradually taking into norm. Okay, after taking Mosley's periodic table, I'll be showing you the whole periodic table where I'll be teaching you what is this block P block, D block, F block, and all the things I'll be clearly bifurcating. Done. After that, I'll be teaching you the nomenclature of elements if the atomic number greater than 100 where we'll be taking it as u u n u u b like that i'll be teaching that nomenclature from there i'll be taking you or teaching you electronic configuration of elements based on the apo principle then after we learn the electronic configuration next concept is trends this is where your inorganic chemistry starts in the trends we have to study the trends in atomic radii. As I said, I'll be using JD Lee book. Almost four to five books will be clubbed together this time. All are very important. I, I'll be picking up the father of, if I were to say, the most, uh, the creamy layer books. Very, very important books which will cover all the concepts. So every video you watch will have quality in that. Every video you watch will have information in that. Done. So I'll be teaching about atomic radii. I'll be teaching about ionic radii. I'll be teaching about ionization in Talpi. I'll be teaching about electron gain in Talpi, I'll be teaching about electronegativity also, right? So students keep watching and keep updated. Any day if I find you, if you are not watching, I will not be uploading the videos because I am doing it for your sake. You should also be connected with me. Next, after that, I'll be teaching you trends in chemical properties. After teaching trends in chemical properties, I'll be going into topic called trends in chemical reactivity. Okay, that is with that the chapter will be over. But don't uh, feel, oh, ma'am, simple chapter to be. It is a simple chapter no numericals in this but the concepts which you are going to learn how to justify a question how to reason in the question i'll be showing you in that way only my way of teaching is to make you understand the concept so students every day video will be uploaded stay connected after completing classification periodic property i'll be going into one more major chapter which is very important for you all so thank you for watching keep noting all these indexes in a book hope most of the students have started a world of chemistry notebook also so in that uh, i've done already five chapters keep noting it from the videos and this comes the sixth chapter so let me meet you again tomorrow with the next video with the first topic step by step thank you for watching right so welcome students to one more session of your third chapter in your grade 11 syllabus so i've already given introduction in the previous video i've already given the index and i also asked you to maintain a separate book for world of chemistry isn't it right till now i think we have completed five chapters this is the sixth chapter which i'm going to start in this particular chapter i'll be discovering or discussing about most of the reasoning questions based on your jd lee book jd lee will be the concept book where i'll be picking up all the questions right so please follow me every day and keep noting the concepts now when I have to start about the introduction of the chapter after the index let's see when were when were the elements discovered basically this chapter is going to teach you about the discovery of elements it's going to teach you in detail about the different uh, discoveries of every person we will also be writing the definition of that we will be writing the <coughs> examples like that we'll be dealing from Dobrina, Newman's, Chan Cortis, that also I'll be dealing, that is called Chan Cortis, Chan Cortis, uh, this one, discovery, then I'll be going to Mendeleev, I'll be going to, so okay, mostly, after mostly is Mendeleev, modern periodic table, so let's start. So the first uh, uh, discovery or the uh, first element excavation or the discovery of the periodic table element started in 1800. Right. So, 1800, the amount of elements discovered is only 31. 31 elements were discovered in 1800. Later on, when the in, uh, invention started, uh, means uh, the improvement or the in inventions, the intensity of the invention started increasing. In 1899, almost 84 elements were discovered. After that, next again, almost 100 years, 100, <coughs> sorry, 121 elements were discovered later. Later on, when it reached 2014, almost 144 elements were discovered. So, all these are the elements which were discovered in the periodic table. Later on, after 2014, now we are in 2018, the amount of elements are in the periodic table, which is prescribed almost, we, we keep writing 118 elements, isn't it? Right, fine. So, <coughs> the discovery went on like this. Now, if I have to perfectly speak 
think about the 1800 or in this particular century the first or the most important discovery about the periodic table and the valid discovery which was given by dobriner so 18 here i have divided the whole lesson board into a table a column first one would be year next one would be discoverer next one would be the name of the Uh, table what was this discovery and what was this based on the concept so this particular table uh, gives you the complete information of the discovery part of the chapter right so what did we say 1800 we had started discovering the elements but the valid explanation was given in 1829 who was given that it was given by dobrina uh, d o b n i n i r in 1862 the next after this it was given by <coughs> chan kor Yes. After that, in eighteen sixty-five, the next uh, chemist was given as the uh, uh, valid means, which has some um, what do you say proof for uh, explanation, right? So it was uh, given by Alexander New Newland. Alexander Newland. Alexander Newland. done now dobri now what did he discover so name of the table the table which he, or uh, we call that whenever the particular word the discovery of dobri now we name it under we put it in inverted commas it's called a law of triads law of triads triads means set of 3 we will see what it is now when chancortes what table he has discovered he has discovered or he has shown us the arrangement of elements in the form of a spiral arrangement we'll be seeing that it is also called cylindrical or cylindrical or spiral arrangement of elements so it's a cylindrical or spiral arrangement of elements he arranged in that way and has explained us we will see what it is then 1865 newland or alexander newland he has given us a tab tableau column the name of the table is called newland octaves so this is cylindrical arrangement this is called capital letters i am writing it is called newland octaves octaves means first and the eighth element properties will be similar octa means eight da now here what was it based on what what is the main criteria on which is concept based so dobrina when we speak about the law of triads he just spoke or he he started his concept based on the physical and chemical properties he said the first and the third element physical and chemical properties means he also said the when you take the first element and the third element atomic mass and take the average of that so the average of those two will be the atomic mass of the middle element so obviously when i speak he spoke basically about physical and chemical properties based on that and he also spoke about atomic weights only this concept was based on atomic weights that's it and now when i come to <coughs> uh, cylindrical arrangement here also they spoke about atomic weights only now when it comes to newland octave he said the property of the first element or the physical properties of the first element uh, or the chemical properties will be similar to the eighth element so here he started speaking about physical as well as chemical properties so this is the criteria on which they are picked up let's come back and see next set of discoveries right after newland's octave table next came into picture that is your mendeleev right <clears throat> so mendeleev has given us his periodic table or the assumptions based on the uh, discovery of the periodic table very important or the supporting system for the periodic table so mendeleev was the person and the table which we call it is as mendeleev's mendeleev's periodic table right so here after this came in 1913 the most important which we are using it now that was discovered by mosley right so mosley has given us the periodic table which we use it in every school every classroom rather so that's called modern periodic table so modern periodic table done so here based basically mendeleev has listed out or has given out so many uh, the sin what do you say definition as well as he's given as the assumptions what he has discovered but whatever he has done there were certain limitations which will be discussing so mendeleev whatever assumptions is given us they were based upon atomic weight only he tried to consider the uh, the concept based on atomic weight of elements right so that is the concept but when it come, came to a valid explanation was given by mosley that is in 1913 and it's called modern periodic table it was based on the concept of the periodicity dependent on atomic number remember 
earlier it was physical and chemical properties atomic weight but suddenly when it came to mostly a valid explanation everything was based on the physical and chemical properties had a periodicity means it dependent or it was dependent on atomic number only so remember first we took the discoveries but here i think please change this this is not 114 41 it is 114 only i'm sorry um yes this is 112 please correct this uh, students it is 112 and it is 114 only now it has become 118 so i'm sorry for this right so where whatever it is the discoveries it started in 1800 then 1899 1999 to 2014 then we have seen first it was given by dobrina then gradually we went to john cotus then after that we went to newlands octase exactly after five years was mendeleev's after that was mostly his discovery there were many scientists in between we'll be doing that as and when i do the chapter right this is your discovery students now let's come back and learn one after the other each discovery very clearly and we will understand with an example right so after the discoveries let us start with the first topic that is dobrina's triads right <clears throat> so what actually is dobrina what did you discover let us first learn how to write in the exam so basically in the exam there are three ways to mention first of all you should write when was it discovered right after it discovered you are going to write about discoverer which person has discovered it which year then which person has discovered that after that you will be writing what is the definition of that after that you will be writing the example of that and finally you will be writing limitations so this is very very important for every concept you write right so now i picked up dobrina's trials first i need to write when was it discovered isn't it or invented so first of all when i have to write the discovery part of it this was basically discovered in 1829 isn't it in 1829 the discovery was made by whom i am writing the discoverer this was discovered by so in 1829 john john okay right john dobrina John Dobrina has discovered this. What was the name of this table? He has in 1829. John Dobrina has discovered has discovered what? It is called law. Put it in inverted commas and write it in capital letters. Law of triads. So you're going to write in this way and underline this. Now wait, wait. What was it dependent on? It was basically dependent on okay law of triads let us write which was dependent on dependent on physical property physical chemical properties if i have to write which are dependent on physical and chemical properties so which are similar properties rather right so what did he do right first of all i've written this i've written this and started with the introduction now i need to write the definition before writing the definition let me see what he has done what he has discovered and then we'll come to the definition i'm writing the definition here so what he did is he has picked up set now i said it's almost uh, very few elements discovered during that time so what he did is he has picked up set of three elements one two and three like that set of three elements that's why it is called triads triads means three right so this set uh, he has picked up and one this done after that he has picked up one more set like calcium strontium and barium so this is one set or one triad and then this is one more triad fine calcium strontium barium now, then what did he say then he has picked up one more set that is sulfur selenium and tellurium and there's one more set chlorine bloomine and fluorine okay so what he did is first initially he worked on these two sets he said when the elements were arranged accord means when the similar elements were arranged on what basis on the based on their physical and chemical properties means the similarity should be there in the uh, physical and chemical properties right comma then he said the atomic weight of the uh, center element you need to start from here once again when the elements or similar elements were arranged based on their properties the atomic weight of the center element is the average of the atomic weight or the sum uh, mean of the atomic weights of the first element and the third element once again when the elements were arranged or similar elements were arranged i have written that let us write what is the definition when put it in inverted commas similar elements these are similar elements this is similar which similarity in the properties when similar elements are arranged arranged in a set of three 
triplets in a set of three. That's why triad is there in a set of three. Then what should you start? The atomic weight of the center element. The atomic weight of the center element. Center element is the average or the mean of is the average or mean of what what mean it is average or mean of the atomic weights of the first element and the third element average or mean of uh, mean of the atomic weights atomic weights of first and third element that's it this is what he has told us right this is also done fine so now what happened he has to prove his uh, definition isn't it so he started right find he took the weights of this then so definition is over i need to take the example i've written here example so this example will come here please take that example here now what he did is he has picked up certain set the first set with similar properties was lithium sodium potassium then next set was calcium strontium barium so he said <coughs> the atomic weight 7 23 39 okay what he said the atomic weight that is 7 plus 39 and the average of this will give the atomic mass of the center element 23 done next he took calcium strontium and barium he said the atomic weight of the first element and the atomic weight of the last element and their mean or the average because there are two quantities so i've taken two is equal to the atomic weight of the center element 8 this is also valid that's fine so because he has arranged a set of three it is called as law of triads but now the same thing what will you write you will take this one as here this example is here that's over next comes limitations now uh, limitations means what could not he explain when it comes to limitations part the most important thing when he started applying this concept that uh, the way of addition or the sum of this one this one divided by two is this this was valid for first set this concept was valid for the second set this one this also was valid this also was valid but he could not apply his theory or he could not apply his assumptions to further why when he took sulfur selenium and tellurium 32 plus your know, 128 by 2 if i have to take it is not equal to 78 isn't it it is more almost i think it 80 or something right so it's 160 by 280 so not equal the the theorem or this particular assumption was not valid to this set further when he came to chlorine bromine and fluorine right so when he added 35.5 plus 127 divided by 2 it is not equal to 80 it is almost 81.25 or something so this also was not valid so what is the thing Doberina, though he has given us the idea of arranging the elements his concept of law of triads were limited to only two sets let's come back once again Doberina, the discovery was this the theorem is this but it says when similar elements were arranged the atomic mass of the first element and the third element and the average is equal to the center element that one you have written after that in example you have drawn this table last would be the limitations you will say Doberina triads was applicable only to two sets that is lithium sodium potassium calcium strontium and barium but it was not valid to further elements like other elements when they started applying this concept to other elements like sulfur selenium tellurium not applicable chlorine bromine fluorine not applicable hence this is a limitation part of Dobrina. so this is the Dobrina triad students let's come back and learn newlands octaves <clears throat> right so now let's come back and learn the next concept that is john that is new lines octave so the law which was given is called as we call it as law of octaves we can write it as law of octaves also right now as soon as you start explaining the concept in the exam first important as i said first write the discover the a time period or when was it discovered then you will you'll be writing about the discoverer who has discovered it then you'll be explaining what is the name of the table then comes back to the definition then comes 
comes back to the example then you should write the limitations all these five should be there so what what is it first you should write the year when it was discovered then you should write who are who is the discoverer who has done this after that what is the name of the table which we are which we are going to learn next would be the definition part after that you are going to write or uh, take the example of this then would be your limitations when you write all these things only you will be given full marks right so first we are according to the concept given which year was it discovered it was basically discovered in 1865 then <clears throat> now so before this there is one more spiral arrangement that also we will see right so in 1865 who was the discoverer we call it as capital j capital a capital m new land okay so in some books it will be written as j stands for john john dot a dot m dot new land okay so right so what did he do what did he discover what did he discover is he has uh, given us a table called law of octaves so let's write in 1865 jam new land or john am new land has given us given us let us write that given us law of octaves that this is also over now after what what else did he discover how many elements has he discovered when this in 1865 the number of elements he could discover was 56 so whatever 56 elements were discovered he has made it in the tableau column right so 56 elements were discovered this is also over now you've given your teacher the basic information what you know now we need to write the definition part so this goes over this is over this is over so now i'll write the definition so for the definition i need space so i'm erasing this part of the board and i'll start writing the definition so when we come to the definition concept first important thing just see what he did is whatever 56 elements he has got he has all arranged in the form of a tabular column but what is the concept in arranging he said elements with similar properties so first you should start when elements were arranged in the increasing order of their atomic weight so hydrogen okay helium was not discovered it was discovered later in Mendeleev's time so hydrogen after that lithium then beryllium then boron so you should start when elements were arranged were arranged what was the uh, criteria or range in the increasing order of atomic weight okay in the increasing order of atomic weight right this is concept now most important thing after writing atomic weight underline that so increasing order of atomic weight you will underline and put a comma then you will write increasing order of the atomic weight the property of the first element and the property of the eighth element so if this is one two three four five six seven and eight so this is one this is eighth so the properties of the first element and the properties of the eighth element are similar so let's uh, join the sentence when elements were arranged in the increasing order of the atomic weight the properties of first element and eighth element okay eight th you can write eighth element or here only nothing to write h eighth element was similar eight element were similar right what does it mean to say he said when you are arranging the 56 elements the property of the first element the eighth element is similar again if i take fluorine this is again if i take this is here i took this as one this will be eight now when i'm considering the second set this will be one again this is one two three four five six seven eight again this is the eighth element for this like that again this is the eighth element for this so every eighth element whichever has similar properties he has placed in this way done but problem starts where whatever concept he has given us the definition is over whatever concept he has given us this was applicable only till calcium element only till this after that this element was the last element after this when he started arranging this the property now he started calcium till calcium is arranged now he's come he started arranging like this when he started arranging the properties of this and this has become dissimilar not similar 
again the property of this and this was not similar these two properties are not similar not similar not similar like that his law was he, his law was applicable only till calcium 20th atomic number 20 in mass number 40 right so that will first i'll write the definition then i'll be coming to examples so i have given this example list now most what you should you remember after writing the definition you should just say why has he arranged this concept or why has he written or why were the musical notes written here on the top these are the musical notes isn't it so he has taken 56 elements like this arranged after that he has mentioned this as a i mean it is uh, compared to musical notes sir re ga ma pa da ni sa why why was that ni and sir why because in in a musical instrument when you take an indian indian instrument to the western type of instrument the first note in the musical instrument if i take this the first note and the eighth note Note, both the notes are similar just watch that note and see the first note in the musical instrument as well as the eighth note both will sound in the similar way that's why the property of the first element as well as the eighth element both are similar just like your musical notes that's why he has picked up that so after the definition you can write in musical notes in musical instruments instruments the first note and and the eighth note both are similar means when you listen to that the modulation or the the frequency of first and the eighth eighth note is similar that's it just like these elements that's why we call it as law of octaves eight elements see here octave this is one octave from hydrogen to fluorine is one octave that's done from so this one to this from again fluorine to chlorine one more octave done so i have written that also good now i have to come to limitations limitation means why was this as a failure fine so the first limitation is this law was applicable only till calcium let us write that as the first limitation okay <coughs> was applicable till calcium only okay till calcium only done after that what happened he started arranging two two elements together in one table that's to see here cobalt and nickel cerium and lanthanum of uh, means both the property he said both the properties will be similar and he has placed two elements in one table which not happen because two elements they should be similar in properties then only i can place isn't it so set of two elements what are they here in this case he has placed cobalt and nickel as well as cerium and lanthanum were placed like this at one place set of two elements were placed under one table that is right were placed under one table that's also okay fine then what is the next limitation what is important is just observe carefully here where is our iron basically iron is here when i have to see the properties of fe iron and cobalt and nickel are similar when we go to Mendeleev's periodic, mostly periodic table, those are, all, those are all transition elements. So what I did is, though the properties of cobalt and nickel as well as iron are similar, he took that iron and placed it under oxygen family, right? So that is one more limitation. So write down, though iron properties are similar, this is how I write, similar to cobalt and nickel it is placed far away okay this is one more last limitation so hope students understand first limitation this is applicable only to calcium similar properties next he has paid two two sets together in one third important though cobalt and nickel and iron properties are similar he has made a separate table those three were the limitations so because this law was further not we, they could not apply it to any other elements so only till calcium it was applicable so i have written the year done i have written the discoverer that is also done then i have given you the table uh, what is that law of octaves why octaves because in musical instruments the first note and the eighth note both sound similar done and definition i have given example this is example limitations also i have given so this is how you are going to write it in the exam right 
so next after neulon's octaves basically this uh, particular uh, concept it was discovered before neulon's octaves only but i am discussing it not in a series right so the next type of discovery which was given by uh, if i have to name him that is d chan it is c o u r t coat yes this is that so basically d chan cortes he was a geologist as well as mineralogist so this is this is his profession he, he is a geologist as well as mineralogist mineralogist okay right he was born in 1820 almost 1820 and he's died in 1880 right just 60 years of us fine so he has given us the stable in the year 1862 so he has discovered in 1862 when was he born he was born 1820 till his 1880 so among this particular period he has given us this list what is said is he has taken this uh, we it's a geologist drawn white paper isn't it so he has taken that paper he said he whatever elements he has discovered he has written on the form of a cylinder so he said this is a easy way to under, uh, understand so whatever elements that is in 1862 he has arranged elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights so let us write that in 1862 elements were arranged elements were arranged in increasing order of atomic weights atomic weights done so what did he arrange he has arranged them in the form of a cylinder so this is also called as telluric screw or it's also called it as we call it as telluric screw or it is also called as telluric helix we also call it as cylindrical arrangement cylindrical arrangement or it is also called as spiral arrangement spiral arrangement so basically all this uh, whatever telluric helix or telluric uh, this in spiral arrangement was given it was not published till mendeleev has come and given his assumptions so, so this was not an accepted law but whatever elements is found he has arranged according to the increasing atomic mass wait see here lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen all are increasing atomic mass this was oxygen fluorine but here uh, oxygen fluorine okay 8 9 10 not there because it is an inert gas element and then sodium magnesium aluminum silicon phosphorus sulfur sulfur chlorine potassium calcium so everything was arranged in increasing order but proper he could not submit his papers it was so it was not accepted right so just remember telluric screw was given by uh, d chancotis this was a uh, chemist um, he is not a chemist he is a geologist as well as mineralogist then he whatever he has got he has arranged according to their at increasing atomic mass and placed it in the form of a cylinder that white paper which was folded right so this is the thing i'm not not much information now we will come into or discuss into the next important law that is mendeleev's law so before that a small thing that is luthermeyer's curve right so uh, next important uh, concept which was given by luthermeyer so luthermeyer was a person who has worked with mendeleev so after this he'll be studying about mendeleev so these two are got uh, along with robert benson he they have worked together and prepared the modern periodic I means not more than periodic table mendeleev's table so what he did is luthermeyer basically he has considered two important concepts what he said whatever elements available at that time he has picked up two important uh, criteria that is atomic volume as well as atomic mass so atomic mass was taken as x axis as ordinate as well as atomic volume taken on the y axis as abscissa done so what he did is when he has arranged he started arranging <coughs> so that is right um when elements were arranged in the increasing order arranged in the increasing order of atomic masses right the elements with similar property fell under that particular peaks and uh, elements were arranged in increasing atomic masses elements with similar properties similar properties uh, fell under 
one slot means uh, they they occupied one slot one one slot means here if this similar properties this is similar properties this is similar properties this is similar properties, similar properties like that now so what luther mayer observed is when he has considered two quantities atomic volume and atomic masses he has observed or the arrangement of the elements based on that they he has seen both the peaks as well as troughs okay it means like if i have to speak in the form of a wave he has he has observed two important things what is that one is the peak one is the trough means the depth the crust and the trough this is the crust part the higher part and the trough which is the lower part or you can say peaks as well as troughs the depth part so what he said is what his observations let us write one after the other so the first important thing he said all the peaks whatever are there let it be lithium let it be sodium let it be potassium he said all the peaks are occupied by electro positive elements peaks are these are the first assumptions which he has given us so assumptions given by luther mayo who is a chemist he said peaks are occupied by electro positive elements so electro positive elements right which we are now naming by according to mosley as alkali metals isn't it that then he said the depths whatever are there depths what are the depths depths are here the carbon depth is here zinc then iron right so he said the depths are occupied by if i have to say iron zinc all these are transition elements which we are speaking isn't it so let us write are occupied by means if i should not say transition elements here yeah, i have to say okay um, when i compare electro positive elements uh, the metal part then transition elements the inner core materials i mean so we will write that because i want you to be clear transition elements done fine so this is what he said and next important thing uh, whatever elements is he is just he could represent in the form of graphs but not much given uh, information given to us but when next after when mendeleev came the thorough explanation with certain limitations also were given which we will be seeing now right so next after your lothamir's curve we have uh, come to the next concept that is mendeleev's periodic table right lot of information to be remembered here let's see so basically i said whenever you're learning a theory you need to remember which year it was discovered who are the discoverer who is uh, who has uh, re really invented that and next would be the definition next would be the examples or now if you're not able to write the example nothing to remember write so much in the exam next would be the merits as well as demerits or the limitations so let's start so mendeleev's periodic table was invented or discovered in 1869 so 1869 was the year and who has discovered it it is discovered by dmitri mendeleev okay dmitri d m so dmitri mendeleev is a person who has given us a valid explanation so from this particular explanation only mosley could frame his modern periodic table right so i have given you the information i have given you the date and the discoverer now comes you need to write the definition so first important whenever you writing a definition try to put it in inverted commas so i don't have place here i'll explain it keep noting so inverted commas open what did he say the properties of the elements please even whenever there is a definition you need to write it word by word once again according to mendeley he said the properties of the elements so what are the properties both the physical properties as well as chemical properties so the properties of the elements yes are the periodic function of their atomic masses remember that once again how many words are there properties of the elements are the periodic function of their atomic masses what does that say what what it says is if i have to explain in normal words whenever elements are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic weights right so whichever element has similar chemical property as well as physical property they follow the periodicity all will be in the same column once again when the elements were arranged in the increasing order of their atomic weights point number 1 that is 
that's done the physical and the elements with similar physical as well as chemical properties they fall or their periodicity is observed all will have the elements will be arranged in such a way that all will have similar similar physical and chemical properties so that is a concept so mendeleev has basically depend on the atomic weights only remember that done so once this is over let's see what actually has he discovered so here the elements which whatever available to him from 65 elements i think all whatever available he has placed it in this particular column done so what did he do first of all after now i have seen which year 1869 then i saw it as mendeleev dimitri mendeleev then i have given you the definition now let us come back to his assumptions what he has given so what he did is whatever available elements are there all these elements he has placed under vertical column so most of the students they get confused this is vertical column in this way this is a horizontal this is, remember right this is horizontal way and this is vertical so he has divided the vertical uh, this one as groups and horizontal as periods okay columns and rows remember that once again he has divided into vertical and horizontal so vertical would be one two three four five six seven eight eight groups then he has divided the horizontal periods one so here one two three four five six basically sevens that lantern and whatever this he could not discover that so eight and six done after that what did he do after dividing he has divided the elements under two categories what is that first he picked up the oxide form of that and then the hydride form so r and stands for that particular uh, element and the o stands for oxide form r the element as well as high h stands for hydride so he said so based on the physical and chemical properties i said so what is the criteria whatever available elements are there he has arranged according to atomic weights then he started arranging according to their chemical properties oxide form and hydride form so after taking that eight and six periods here he said he started arranging the elements so he, here i have marked two things what is that one with the red one always whatever red ones are there that particular thing or the demerits part you need to discuss in demerits whatever are marked in black are you will be discussing in merits done so the third important point is after arranging the elements in there according to the periodicity and properties that is in based on the atomic weights what he observed is the first important achievement i am writing about the achievement understand so he has left so i'm speaking of the black things which are marked so this is the black thing what he did is he is arranged like this then what he did was he has left a space below boron so hydrogen lithium beryllium boron carbon everything is arranged the first important achievement is he has left gap below boron this part he could not name the element then he is left part space below aluminium this also was left blank after that he has left space below silicon this also was blank this was blank this was blank this was blank but what did he name give he has taken it from like in sanskrit we have no uh, like eka dvi try yes eka eka means one so he said the element which is below boron he named it as eka boron that is the first thing eka boron then he said the element which is below aluminium as eka aluminium then he said the element which is below silicon is eka silicon he didn't know the name later it was discovered later when it was discovered that eka boron now see here this is boron this is eka boron the eka boron whatever was there was named as scandium the proper of this one this one it clearly matched so it was discovery isn't it yes then what did he say eka aluminium the element which was discovered later eka aluminium is nothing but gallium that also just fit into that then he said eka silicon that is nothing but germanium so the next discovery eka boron means the first merit of uh, mendeleev eka boron is called scandium eka aluminium is called gallium eka silicon is called germanium so shall we write that yes we will write boron that is discovered element is scandium and that is eka boron earlier this is called as eka boron next after this next element it was discovered as aluminium which was called as eka aluminium what was the element discovered now it is gallium next silicon it was called as eka silicon now the element discovered is gallium that's it this is the thing so remember that was the first achievement of mendeleev after the first achievement next important achievement or merit let us come back to this so what he did is in, in his particular thing he could 
correct or he could give us the I means he clearly corrected the atomic weights of some elements what did he do beryllium this is one achievement actually I should put it in red, black so he corrected the atomic weight of beryllium from 13.9 to 13.5 to 9 that was the second merit first was discovery of the elements that is boron eka boron eka aluminium second merit was he could correct the atomic weights of beryllium 13.5 to 9 he could also correct the atomic weight of gold he could correct the atomic weight of uh, indium he could correct the atomic weight of platinum that also he did so next important uh, merit is he could correct correct atomic weight of what what from beryllium gold and platinum this was the important thing that is the merits let us come back to demerits now so what he did is first important demerit is uh, basically hydrogen element right so hydrogen if i have to speak hydrogen exists in three different isotopes isn't it that is protium deuterium and tritium h1 2 and 3 so what is this criteria he said what are isotopes having the same atomic number in different mass numbers isn't it so he could not place the position he could not give the position of isotopes so that is the second demerit fine so okay let us write first demerit rather i'm sorry first demerit uh, this was merits so the first demerit is he could not give position for the isotopes where to place he didn't know second demerit is just see here when i come to this set that is cobalt and nickel so cobalt atomic mass is 58.9 nickel atomic mass is 58.6 but what did he say he said you should arrange uh, according to the increasing order of their atomic weights isn't it but here what happened cobalt is 58.9 this is 58.6 which was placed before isn't it that demerit it is a demerit that's the second demerit first demerit is position of isotopes was not given second here in cobalt and nickel they were not arranged according to the increasing atomic weight let's see one more see here tellurium tellurium is 127.6 and uh, cnidin is 126.9 here also there was a mismatch he could not place the elements here also according to the increasing atomic mass so first demerit first demerit is this one second demerit is this when I have to come back to the third demerit, Jesse here, he has placed three three elements together like this three three elements right so that should not happen isn't it everything should be in the column wise placed so this column or this three three elements were placed which were not explained by him. Next important demerit what he did is see by then in uh, this what do you say we inert gases were not discovered so if I have to take it it's an achievement because he has placed a he is not given any inert gases he has placed a submit column later when mostly came he could place them in that particular column and if i have to come about the next important he didn't speak anything about lanthanides and actinides lanthanides and actinides nowhere uh, discussion was there he could not place it because there was nothing he has given us a fixed table so the concept of lanthanides and actinides also was not given to us that is also demerit one is this demerit second is this okay second is this demerit third is this demerit and fourth is the position of lanthanides and actinoids okay done so uh, with this limitations mostly came into picture mostly then came into picture and he gave us a different law that is periodic law okay so he uh, mentally also has designed a book called principles of chemistry very interesting chem medicine go through wikipedia you'll have a clear understanding about that so this is a mentally periodic table once again students write the year 1869 write the discoverer name, discoverer name that is Dimitri Mendeleev write the definition that is the properties of the elements are the periodic function of the atomic weights or atomic masses after that start explaining what he has taken that's also done next important thing you'll be starting with the merits what are the merits what did I mark I've marked merits with my black marker this is a merit wherever merit eka boron eka silicon next merit is he has corrected the atomic masses of beryllium gold as well as platinum when i come to the demerits i said position of isotopes not explained position of lanthanides and actinides not explained position of cobalt and nickel as well as tellurium and niden not given so all these are demerits Fine. he could also not explain why is that periodicity periodicity following why he could not explain why that uh, um, why am i placing three three elements like uh, ruthenium rhodium palladium why are three three elements placed together so let's come back and meet with the next table that is a modern periodic table or mostly periodic table 
right so the next table which we are going to learn are the des next discovery that is a modern periodic table so modern periodic table is behind me this was basically discovered in uh, or it was discovered by henry mosley right so uh, the tenure between 1887 to 1915 uh, so 1917 i think 1887 to 1917 was his tenure right so the modern periodic table which was given by henry mosley after mendeleev's table so we have already seen mendeleev's table in the last uh, video now so whenever you're learning about a table remember important thing as i said first mention the year after mentioning the year you need to mention about the discoverer that is henry mosley after that you need to give the definition of what he has said so same like mendeley but a slight difference that made the whole concept very clear to us what did mendeley say he said the properties of the elements are the periodic function of the atomic masses or atomic weight he said but when it comes to henry's modern periodic table he said the properties of the elements are the periodic function of the atomic numbers this is where is the difference so whenever you are speaking about mosley's periodic table use the word atomic number once again the properties of the elements yes are the periodic properties of the atomic numbers so the properties of the elements are nothing but atom physical properties as well as chemical properties so what is it observe these properties they occur at regular intervals so we will redefine it so whenever elements are arranged in the increasing atomic numbers what happens the properties like physical properties and chemical properties so those elements which have similar physical properties as well as similar chemical properties they fall under one particular sort they fall under those only so all these have similar physical and chemical properties these of similar and physical properties like that the periodicity is observed the recurrence of this property done so i've given the definition now what was his observation what did he discover so in the modern periodic table when i've seen i've got this chart very wonderful chart it is very important for you in organic chemistry done so according to modern periodic table there are two important things which you should remember <laughs> what are they now my work is arranging according to atomic numbers it has two important concepts most of the students they get confused two important words you should remember remember now see here this is called vertical this is vertical this is called vertical now this is horizontal this is horizontal 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 remember so he has divided or the periodic table contains two important things vertical columns these are called columns it is all vertical columns horizontal rows understand that so how many vertical columns are there vertical columns are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 18 vertical columns we have point number one second point we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 horizontal rows once again 18 vertical columns and 7 horizontal rows now what are these called 18 vertical columns are called groups 7 horizontal rows are called periods remember that that's the second point understood students 18 vertical columns are called groups 7 horizontal rows are called periods Correct? yes so uh, next important thing what did he discover he said he has placed elements according to their atomic numbers and periodicity in properties yes so the modern periodic table contains just see this is your first set these are called s block elements because the incoming electron enters in the s orbital after that there is one more set to my right hand extreme these are called p block elements the incoming electron or the valence electron enters into p orbital next set is these elements these are called transition elements transition elements where the inner electron it is also called as d block the electron enters into the d block elements next these are called inner transition elements where the incoming electron enters into f block element once again s block elements p block elements d block elements and f block elements done here it enters valence electron into s uh, orbital here p orbital here d and this is f done so once he is divided now i've divided into horizontal what uh, this in horizontal rows are over vertical columns are over divided division into s p and d and f are over so s block these are called alkali metals first row this particular thing is called alkali metals these are called alkaline earth metals next this is the p block where i'll be dealing one after the other group 
group where what is called alk uh, chalcogens what oxygen family everything i'll be dealing one after the other just understand so s block contains alkali and alkaline earth metals p block contain groups and transition elements as well as inner transition elements that now when i have to speak about the s block elements remember whenever i speak about this the properties of all these are similar the properties of all these are similar like that this is also similar in the modern periodic table after dividing after learning the horizontal rows as well as vertical horizontal rows and vertical columns after dividing into s p d and f block elements next important concept which you should remember is something called a concept called metalloids see here the purple colored elements what is this important these metalloids are those just see here not this particular thing see here not this purple i'm sorry here boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony tellurium polonium all these elements are called metalloids what are these they are the elements which have both means they contain or they are going to show both the properties of the metals as well as non metals now what are metals here we will discuss the next point so metalloids are placed in the p block elements next important thing to the left extreme of the periodic table just see the first two groups are all completely metals on my right extreme here all these elements are non metals fine metals are always electro positive in nature that means they tend to donate means they uh, uh, the ability to what do you say donate electrons but when it comes to electro negative non metals are always electro negative in nature they try to drag the electrons means they try to pull the electrons from metals that's the combination metal as well as non metal combined together for example na and cl together forms nacl which is the common salt which we take isn't it so once again the periodic table metals are always electro positive ability to donate donate electrons non metals are electro negative ability to drag or pull the electron pair next comes the uh, transition elements so the transition elements are a combination of different types of metals most precious metals are here just see here silver is here your gold is here yes okay silver here yes silver sorry silver here gold here platinum here all these are precious metals which have lustrous in nature next comes important metals which we use it in daily life just like your copper we use aluminium okay aluminium is here to the extreme this one okay zinc here important metal copper here nickel wires iron which we use chromium which we use cop co this is cobalt which we use chromium is here cobalt is here everything manganese all these metals which Which we we using in daily life are there in the transition table in this one. Next after transition table, next comes a C set called F block elements, which contains two series. What is this? This is called lanthanide series, and this is actinide series. Where is it starting? Your lanthanide series is starting from lanthanum, fifty seventh element. Next comes cerium, praseodium, neodymium, promethium, samarium, like that. This lanthanide series starts from lanthanum, and it ends. set lithium that is called f block element lanthanides in the same way lanthanides the next series is called actinide series actinide series starts from actinium look here this is purple color following with this and actinide series starts from actinium and it ends at laurentium so there are two things s block element and i should not say two things it's s block elements p block elements d block elements f block elements again having lanthanides and actinides so lanthanide starts from lanthanum to lutetium actinide starts from actinium to laurentium so this is a complete periodic table so in this periodic table there are lot of things to study so many reasoning questions i'll be showing you how is atomic size increasing decreasing so the criteria which i'll be following so this periodic chart whenever you're learning some here in organic chemistry what is the criteria you need to st study about the electronegativity how is it increasing in a period how is it increasing decreasing in increasing group i will study in a group i'll be studying in a period i will also dealing with the ionization enthalpy concept i'll be studying teaching you about reduction i'll be teaching you about oxidation 
I'll be teaching you about atomic radius. I'll be teaching about electron affinity as well as metallic and non-metallic property. So in that atomic radius, I'll be teaching about ionic radius, covalent radius. All will be dealt in the form of reasoning questions from JD Lee. So your modern periodic table students. So understand one important thing. Whenever you're writing about a table, write the age which it was discovered. Write who has discovered it. Write the definition. Write the uh, assumption. And important thing is you should also end up writing the limitations. So if I have to speak about limitations, first and most important, a hydrogen position. Because hydrogen resembles group 1 as well as it also resembles the 17th group, halogens. He could not explain that limitation. So remember that is the most most important limitation of Mendeley's periodic table. Not much, very few limitations only. Right. The next limitation which we have to remember is, as we have seen in Medley's also, the position of isotopes were not given. So this position was a bit not clarified because this also has one electron, this also uh, is means one minus one. So hydrogen either should be positioned here because this matches this particular column as well as this particular column. That was a confusion. Next important limitation was the position of isotopes. What isotope having same atomic number but different mass number? He could not explain or give a position for isotopes anywhere because elements have say like chlorine chlorine has two isotopes 35.5 as well as 37 isn't it so hydrogen has three isotopes one two and three so that position was not given under the third limitation he could not explain us like because lanthanides if i have to see it becomes very long if i take this column and this column here and place it it becomes very long so lanthanide and actinides were given a different position here below the periodic table that was a slight limitation otherwise it should be after 57, it should be 58, 59, then all these 71. After that, it should be 72. So, that was not clearly explained by Mendeley. But as of this particular thing, when we start using it, as in when we apply different, different concepts, all will be clear for us. So, thank you for watching, students. This is your modern periodic table along with the definition, along with the uh, assumptions as well as limitations. Right. So, welcome back students to one more session of your periodic table uh, chapter done. So, we have already seen uh, the different, uh, different concepts about like started with the different Dobrinian triads, then I have taught you new lens octaves, then I have taught you Mendeleev's table, in between I taught, taught you Luther Mayer's curve, then I also taught you Mosley's modern periodic table. So, in Mosley's periodic table, I have given a clear explanation and then I took you to a concept called inorganic trick series 2. Now, now, after learning that, now gradually I'll be taking you into a journey of all the questions which will be asked, whether it is the CBSE grade 11 questions or JE or NEET. That. So, first for that, let us see what is the long form of periodic table, that is your mostly periodic table. But here we are going to study the comparison between S block elements and P block elements. So, if you know this, any question from that may, uh, may be asked. So, let's start with the concept. So, whenever you are learning a difference or a concept of differences between S block, P block, D block, and F block, you should always have a criteria on what basis are you differentiating. Here, what did I do? I have taken S block elements, I have taken P block elements, and I have written the criteria. Criteria. What is the criteria? Here I have picked up different properties like general electronic configuration, reactivity, physical nature, melting point, boiling point, malleability, catenation property like that. I will be showing the differences. Done. So the property which I picked up, the first one is general electronic configuration. What is GEC? Once again, general electronic configuration. So if I have to take this block elements, as we have seen in the periodic table, it is something like this, in the modern periodic table. Right. All these are S block elements, these are P block elements, this is D block and we have F block which is present below. Now if I have to write the general electronic configuration, it like you need to write N S1 and N S2. Right. If it is N S1, the first one we call it as <coughs> alkali metals and N S2 we call it as alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals than alkaline earth metals. So this is this is the general config, electronic configuration for them. Now, when I have to come back to P block, where is P block? P block is here. 
Then what is the general electronic configuration? P block means the incoming electron has to enter into the P shell. Then so unless until NS2 is filled, we will not go. So NS2, then NP, it ranges from 1, it can go till 6 electrons. P can fill 6 electrons, isn't it? Just see, this is your P orbital, all half filled, then it is next fulfilled. So 1 to 6 electrons it can accommodate that general electronic configuration now where is it starting in the periodic table we have started that is here how is it named it is called 13 it's starting on 13 through 18th group isn't it right so when i take boron or if i have to stay 13th group if i say 13th group means it is called as 3a 3a means 13th group then 4a 14th 5a 15th 6a that means 16th 7a that means 17th well, this is the 17th group then if i have to say 8a that is nothing but 8a we just call it as 18th group that is nothing but your inert gas elements inert elements are there in this that is your p block element that now next important thing reactivity when i have to speak about the reactivity of s block elements besides being very smaller from left to right what happens the size decreases isn't it right so compared to p block elements the reactivity of this particular thing is very high so they can form what type of ions they can form univalent and bivalent ions so reactivity is high done what type of ions are formed suppose if i take the example of this block elements lithium it will form lithium plus one now how did i write this hydrogen helium lithium atomic number is three that means it is one is two two is one so it can give only one electron that's why i've written lithium plus one univalent after lithium if i have to take the next one beryllium beryllium atomic number four how can i write one is two two is two how many it can give two electrons that's why beryllium plus two so what am i trying to tell you reactivity i'll say reactivity activity is high they will form univalent as well as bivalent ions you can write it here suppose if i have to come back to p block elements so p block elements uh, what are the elements boron carbon nitrogen oxygen uh, fluorine and neon right i'm going from left to right this is your periodic table 3a group 4a 5a 6a 7a and 8a done if i have to take boron it is 5 this is 6 this is 7 this is 8 this is 9 this is 10 done now let's write the configuration 1 is 2 2 is 2 2p <coughs> 1 this is 1 is 2 2 is 2 2p 2 then 1 is 2 i'm writing the outer configuration 2p 3 it is 2p 4 this is 2p 5 1 is 2 2 is 2 is it right let me write maybe if i'm wrong let me write 1 is 2 2 is 2 2p 5 5 6 7 8 9 correct now this is 1 is 2 2 is 2 2 p 6 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 2 10 done so if i see the configuration p block elements because the electron keeps entering every time into the p or p shell only see here 2 p 1 2 p 2 2 p 3 2 p 4 2 p 5 2 p 6 so compared to this here it is easy to form a univalent and bivalent ion but here since the electron is entering into the same p shell as the size decreases reactivity when i have to see it's a bit lesser compared to this because it's going on adding in the p shell always done let us come back to see physical nature physical nature as block elements i said there are metals alkali metals alkaline earth metals they're very soft they are malleable malleable they're ductile right and i can easily show means the uh, the nature of them is metallic in nature they are metallic in nature done what is soft okay what is malleable where i can draw the metals into sheets if i say ductile where i can draw the uh, metals into wires done but when i come back to p block element the physical nature here there is a transition between metallic property to non-metallic property non-metallic property and in between here also you have a series called metalloids which are there which are present in the zigzag manner in this so you also find metalloids in p block elements done yes so this transition is observed metallic metallic to non-metallic property in p block so let's come back and see the next trends of this where can you use this you can use when they ask you a state in comparison of the ps block elements as well as p block in terms of general properties then you should write all this answers
Yes. Let's come back and see the next trend in the concept. Ionization enthalpy. What is this ionization enthalpy? The amount of energy released when you are uh, like you have to take out an electron from the valence ship, isn't it? That. So in the S block and P block, we are trying to compare this. What do we learn? If I have to speak about S block element, the first element, as we know, lithium. We have studied lithium, right? So in lithium, atomic number three, <laughs> it is one is two, two is one. After lithium, the next one is beryllium, right? Beryllium 4, 1 is 2, 2 is 2. Okay, that suppose what happens here every time the electron is adding now, after this s orbital, it will go to the p, it's adding to the outer shells, right? When it is adding to the outer shell, the distance between the nucleus and the outermost shell is more. So, what will happen to the ionization enthalpy? If the distance is more, I can apply like with less ionization energy only, I can take out the electron, isn't it? Yes. So, what can we say? Ionization enthalpy is less compared to P block. Correct. Now, what, why am I saying compared to P block? Just see. What happens in P block? In P block, when I say boron, Right, we, we are taking like boron, the chart is here only just seeing boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Here it is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. As we have written 1 is 2, 2 is 2, then 2p3, here 2p4, here 2p5, here 2p6, here 2p7, here uh, 2p8. Isn't it? Right? So, did we write something wrong? So, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p. This is wrong, isn't it? Okay. Uh, did I write? Yes. I started wrong only here. So, let me come back and do it. Not, no, no, it's a mistake. Let's see. So, if it is 5, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. This is 2p1. This is 2p2. This is 2p3. This is 2p4. This is 2p5. This is 2p6, isn't it? Done. 2p6. Now, what's happening? Every time the electron is adding to the p shell only. So, what's happening? The electron starts or the nuclear or the z-effective charges more on that. It starts dragging the electron. That means when the nuclear charge or the z-effective is more, what will happen to the size? Size is less. When the size is less, what will happen to the ionization energy? The ionization energy will be more. Uh, the amount of and the energy which I have to apply to remove an electron will be more. So, compared to them, this is lesser. Here, it is more. Now, oxidation states. So, oxidation state, what do we learn? If I have to say in first one, uh, first alkali metals. Alkali metals, they show plus one oxidation state. Of which one? We call it as M plus one. Right. When I take alkaline earth metals, that is the second one. Alkaline earth metals, it will be plus two. That is, oxidation state is plus two. Done. Suppose if I have to take P block elements. Done. How are the oxidation state? Just see. For 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, how much it can show plus 3 oxidation state, plus 4 oxidation state, plus 5 oxidation state, which plus 6 and plus 7. Done. Yes. So, are there not variable oxidation state? Yes. So, P block elements show variable oxidation states. OS means oxidation states. Done. Now, let us come back and speak about ionic or covalent bond. Right. So, S block elements except beryllium all are ionic compounds. So, I am writing that except beryllium all are ionic in nature. Done. But when I come to P block elements all are covalent compounds. Yes. So, covalent that is ionic. This is covalent compounds where just when I say hydrides, when I take chlorides or when I take sulfides, all these oxides, all these are covalent compounds. So, these are the uh, physical properties. So let's come back and see some more physical properties of, or the differences between S block and P block. Right. Now, let's come back and see the next uh, property. So, till now we have learned different different properties, right? So, melting and boiling point. So, when I have to speak about melting and boiling point, the size is smaller, isn't it? So, it is lower MP and BP. Then, so compared to P block, P, P block obviously has higher melting point and 
boiling point. Now let's come back to flame test. So in the salt analysis, we do all the dry heating tests, isn't it? And after that, we do flame test. So whenever we speak about flame test, because of the excitation of electrons, so S block elements they impart color, impart color under flame. Okay, hope you would have done this salt analysis already. Done. So which which color? Suppose if I take sodium, what is the color of sodium under flame? It is golden yellow in color. It's going to impart because of the excitation of the electrons from the ground state to the excited state, and the property of the fluorescence, they start imparting color under flame test. Done. Suppose if I take P block, nothing of that flame test color we observe for P block elements. Done. When I have to see the catenation property, what is catenation? It is self linking 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 property. One will link to the other, the other will link. So this is not observed in S block elements, but Catenation as well as allotropic property. Allotropic means existing in different forms. For example, carbon allotropes are diamond, graphite, buckminster fullerene, isn't it? So, catenation property is observed in P-block elements like sulfur will show S8 linkage, chair form, crown shape, isn't it? Right. Then we have oxygen, when we have carbon, which is existing in three allotropes, just now I said diamond, graphite and buckminster fullerene. Silicon is one more of P-block which shows a metalloid which shows catenation or self or allotropic or catenation property self linkage property network solids we call right so this is your uh, these are the properties let's come back and finish off with uh, three more properties in comparison with s block and p block Right. So, let us come back and see the other properties which are left out. Done. So, when I compare the S block elements and P block elements, we already seen there is a size difference. So, P block since the electron keeps entering into the same P shell, what will happen? The size reduces from left to right in a period. So, compared to this S block element has larger size, isn't it? Right. When it is larger size, now here smaller size. Why? Well, just now I told you the reason because the electron adds only always with the P shell. That. So, because of the larger size, what what will be low? If the size is larger, obviously ionization enthalpy will be less. If the size is larger, electron affinity also will be less. If the size is larger, uh, if I have to say the electronegativity difference means a bit farther, it is like more missile. So, electronegativity difference uh, compared to them will be low, right? Ionization enthalpy or ionization potential also you can write. Fine. So, these elements, if I have to say, they are electro positive in nature because they donate electrons. When I have to see, okay, reducing and oxidizing nature also, if I have to see, these are, they have reduction, reducing properties, reducing properties. But here, when I have to compare, the size is smaller. When the size is smaller, ionization enthalpy will be higher, i.e., when I have to see, so everything will change, isn't it? Now, but here when I see the elements are, because of the smaller size, they hold the electron pair closer. So, the electronegativity also will be high. So, that means they are electronegative in nature. So, here when I see the reducing property, it reduces from, means there is a range of reducing property to oxidizing property. These are the things. So, oxidizing, they, they change from reducing to oxidizing in nature. So, let us come back in the exam. If they ask you, illustrate the differences between S block elements and P block elements in terms of their general characteristics. There is a long form of periodic table. This is a detailed explanation of long form. So, what should you do? You should make two, three tabular columns one is for the properties one is with the x block element one is for the p block i'll be further teaching in my next video d block and f block also done what is the criteria we have divided i've given list of criteria finally i ended with other properties also so this is how you are supposed to learn a table from the ncrt textbook thank you for watching students i'll meet you again as i said with the next video that is differences between d block and f block Right. So, welcome back students to one more series of inorganic chemistry. So, till now we have seen the inorganic series too. And then after that, I have taught you the differences between S block and P block. The, the different properties like melting point, boiling point, electronegativity, affinity, positivity, ionization, enthalpy, all these. And for, after that, we have gone into a question, uh, this in topic that is differences between D block and F block. That also was done. And then I have taught you the concept called what is atomic radii. Right. In that we have also studied 
different like different types like covalent radii, metallic radii, ionic radii, van der Waals Ferguson. All these concepts have been covered in that. Now I'll be doing questions based on these concepts. That is the size, the atomic radii. So I'll be picking up different different questions which are very important in terms of inorganic chemistry. So as I said, I'll be picking up different reasoning questions that would be the main would be from JD Lee. JD Lee would be the basic source. After that, in from different different sources also. Right. So uh, let us start with the first question and let us also see how to write the answer. Right. What is the question? I will go from the basic questions. Just let, let us make it more and more. Uh, like we will pick up more and more complicated questions. What does this say? Why does lithium and sodium have larger atomic radii compared to fluorine and chlorine? Okay. Simple question. Right. First of all, when such questions are given you, either they may give you a question like this or they may give you a trend like this or they may give you values like this. It may be any way. But uh, the way of answering should be the same. Right. What, what did I ask us to compare? They said lithium and sodium. Okay. Lithium slash sodium have larger atomic radii they said right atomic radii and compared to which one fluorine and chlorine <clears throat> what is when you see this element what does it mean we are going from left to right in the periodic table this is your left to right in the periodic table that is in the period and there is one more data information given here in this case lithium sodium potassium what is that data that data is giving us or let us write that concept here right that is this is the first data this is the second data here they've given us value for lithium plus sodium plus and potassium plus what are we going we are going from top to bottom in a group right now let us justify when i have in a period I, I, I obviously it is obvious understood isn't it when such questions when we move from left to right as i said the electron keeps adding to the same patient always when it adds to the same position what happens there is effective nuclear charge acting on the outer electron obviously the size will be less but how to write it in the exam that's important now lithium and sodium let us write the configuration and see so when it comes to lithium atomic number 3 11 this is 9 and this is 17 isn't it let's write now this is left to right this is also left to right so it is 1 is 2 2 is 1 done sodium 1 is 2 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Fluorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Uh, Done. This is 1s2, 2s2. Two, 2p6, two 3s2, two, 3p5. Done. Now, so what are you observing? Yes, here the electron always adds into the inner p, the, uh, the p shell only. But here, what is happening? It's expanding, isn't it? This is 1s, this is 2s. Here, in this case, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s. So, there is expansion of the orbitals. But here, there is filling of electrons in the same p shell. You, you should write that thing. That is the reason. So, how to write in the reason? From left to right in a period. Left to right means it's nothing but period. So, write down. Electron adds to the same P subshell. Hence, hence what happens? <coughs> Lithium and sodium larger size, fluorine and chlorine smaller size. Hence, fluorine and chlorine have smaller radii. This is over exact prompt answer perfect answer to that particular question now i need to answer this question in a group what is happening when i take lithium atomic number three sodium 11 19 yes now let's see one is two two is one but here it is a lost one electron so i'm writing one is two 11 one is two two is two two p six three is one it has lost one electron so take out this potassium one is two two is two two p six three is two 3p6 okay 678 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 okay right now next comes uh, s electron fine how much do you get 10 11 12 13 14 16 17 18 okay 3s2 4p right so this is almost 18 and 4 is 1 
now here it has lost one electron so i need to take out this electron now what happens what are you observing this is one is when you are going down the group 2p is getting added when you're going down the group 3s and 3p are also getting added is it not expanding in number of orbits that is what is your answer so in a period electron adds to the same subshell next in a group what happens atomic number increases number of shells increases then what happens automatically in the atomic number increases number of shells increases as the name suggests you need to end your answer with atomic radii also increases that's it so whenever you are writing inorganic reasoning questions remember don't try to make it bigger lines don't try to make five six or eight lines no only keyword is whatever question is given to you try to put it put give the electronic configuration and immediately start giving the reason in a box that's enough half mark for this half mark for this again this one i've taken the example given to us i have written the electronic configuration i have written the reason so let's meet again with the next question which is a combination of four to five books together to one more session of your inorganic chemistry that is your periodicity so in earlier video we have seen the differences between s block and p block isn't it now today we'll be seeing the differences between d block elements those are called the transition elements as well as in the transition elements that is f block element right let us see the differences this is how you need to write in the exam also that so when i have to speak about d block elements when i have to see to speak about the general electronic configuration so transition elements means the electron uh, the incoming electron adds to the d subshell isn't it so what is the configuration you need to write n minus 1 the penultimate shell how many electrons can d fill it is 1 to 10 electrons so ns can accommodate 1 to 2 that is the general configuration if i have to speak about the block elements it enters into penultimate as well as anti penultimate shell also so that is n minus 2 now f can fill how many electrons 1 to 14 now n minus 1 then d 1 to 2 electrons only and n is 2 so this is your general electronic configuration suppose if i have to speak about the oxidation state of d block elements so d block elements show variable oxidation state why because of the presence of d electrons d can accommodate 10 electrons isn't it so it's going to show load or different variations of variable oxidation state hence uh, because the participation also will be more right so let us say they show variable valency what is the reason to do the participation of due to participation of ns and as well as well as n minus 1 d electrons right hence they should variable but here uh, this also shows variable valency i'm not saying they're not this also shows variable valency but the stable there's something called stable oxidation state or common state isn't it common oxidation state in case of f block elements is plus three this is the common oxidation state and this is stable enough so they prefer forming plus three oxidation state only so physical properties so what are phys different physical properties they're basically when i speak about d block it's a combination of all the metals isn't it so they are metals mostly right so these metals what do they have they're going to possess high values of so what are the different physical properties you speak in terms of high values of melting point high values of boiling point and when I speak about melting and boiling point they were high values of density then uh, thermal stability all these are the different physical properties so i can also include a property called hardness isn't it so because of this metal metallic nature they possess all these values the very high compared to f block elements so now when i have to speak about f block elements these are also metals right f block or the inner transition elements we have lanthanides and actinides right so what is the spe specific characteristic so these are the metals with high melting point and boiling point done so because of this melting point boiling point i can say when i say metals it is basically they're ductile and malleable isn't it that's a property now color property very important concept there is a concept called dd transition which is shown by d block elements dd transition there is an excitation of electron between the d and d subshell i have done one video about dd transition d block elements please check the playlist done so here what happens because of the dd transitions color property or they are colored ions d block elements mostly are color 
colored ions and colored compounds also so the, you basically observe most of the colored property in this only this also but compared to this this is a bit lesser the color property of this so this is basically due to dg transition let's come back and see the next property so here why why are they showing color property suppose if they ask you right you can just say because of the dd transition and and the presence of unpaid electrons due to the unpaid electrons they just get transferred from means or between d and d that so next let us see the magnetic property here magnetic d block elements they have unpaid electrons i said they're variable oxidation state so because of the unpaid electrons which are present in d block element they show magnetic property and that two unpaid electron means they are paramagnetic in nature unpaid means paramagnetic isn't it if it is paid it is diamagnetic but f block elements not magnetic but they show radioactive properties this is the major difference radioactive properties that let us come back to alloy formation what is alloy formation alloy is combination of two or more metals isn't it so d block elements having maximum number of metals they try to form a lot of alloys because what is what is that concept when when does it form alloy when there is a like almost they have similar size isn't it so you can write d block elements show alloy formation so what is alloy formation just now i said alloy formation is nothing but combination of two or more metals okay two or more metals combination of two or more metals is alloy so why because they have similar sizes similar sizes so this is not possible in this case when i speak about catalyst yes d block elements are good catalyst so they're very good catalyst if i take if i have to take an example okay platinum palladium nickel copper all these are uh good catalyst which we'll be using in chemistry so that fact is not observed here so interstitial compounds so what are interstitial compounds so basically um there are smaller atoms like hydrogen carbon nitrogen isn't it they fix into the lattice sites isn't it of the metals so this particular interstitial means interstitial means gaps so this particular concept of uh, means you know the presence of smaller atoms like hydrogen oxygen nitrogen into the gaps is called uh, is called interstitial compound then so this is basically uh, d block elements they form interstitial compounds so this is not observed this in this so these are the different students so please uh, note it carefully i have done both the pages the difference in s block and p block as well as d block and f block so thank you for watching trends in periodic properties till now we have discussed dobrina triads newlands octaves uh, luther meyer's curve then i have discussed about mendeleev's table then i have discussed about mostly stable then i went into a concept that is your inorganic tricks right that is part 2 as well as part 3 after that i have give, uh, given you the concept of the differences between that is your long form of table where i have discussed the differences between s block and p block then i did a video on d block and f block now i'll be starting with the concept that is trends in periodic properties so the first trend which you should study is atomic size and radius so i've already given this trick how to go about with uh, the questions or what are the different uh, tricks in atomic size watch the earlier video that is inorganic series 2 that now first of all whenever whenever i have to define atomic size atomic radius what is that it is basically atomic radius if i have to write the definition it is the distance between the center of nucleus okay center of nucleus of an atom to the to its outermost shell so outer most shell of electrons outermost shell of electron what is that outermost shell of electron that is nothing but penultimate shell isn't it penultimate shell so that distance between the center nucleus and the outermost shell that is electron this distance is called the atomic size atomic radius now we have shells here in between so first of all we can't determine the absolute value of atomic radius why so let us write the reason suppose if they ask you the question why can't the, why can't the exact value or absolute value exact or absolute value of 
atomic radius absolute value of atomic radius cannot be measured okay cannot be measured suppose if they ask me this question what should i write so measured so basically i'll list out few points which are uh, means you can directly give it as an answer first important why can't it define atomic radius or exact value because to locate the position of an electron because electron keeps moving around isn't it right wave nature we have studied so the position of the exact position of the electron in an uh, in an atom okay as an particular orbit which it is it doesn't have any sharp boundaries so that position cannot be located when the position can't be located it's very difficult for me to predict the exact size so the first point is uh, you should write exact position of electrons in an atom has no sharp boundaries sharp it doesn't have any sharp boundaries that is the reason i can't predict the this one because this is the distance between nucleus and electron that is one next important thing is suppose if i have to speak about the second point it's not because uh, to determine the size it's not possible to isolate individual atom i can't separate an individual atom uh, for its for determination of size isn't it just by the second isolation of individual atom is difficult so because i can't isolate i can't measure the atomic radii also now in a group if i take a group of atoms the probability distribution means how how much is the distribution of electrons so that also is very difficult isn't it yes so next important thing is and i have to speak in a group of atoms the probability we will first write to how to just present the answer then we'll explain that probability distribution of electrons is influenced by presence of neighboring atoms hence the size of the atom may change isn't it from environment to environment hence size of atom may change from one environment to another right so important yeah just take this so this is the reason we can't determine the atomic size of ionic uh, radii right? so this is the concept students so what is the last one in a group of atoms the probability distribution of electron is influenced by the presence of neighboring atoms so that electron distribution in one atom when they're present together the group of atoms this distribution on one atom is influenced by the distribution of other atoms so during this process how can i measure the distance exactly very difficult isn't it so that is the main reason we can't predict the atomic radii now next important thing we are going to see the different types of atomic radii that is covalent radius van der waals radius because i can't say i said we can't determine the exact position i can't determine exactly what is atomic radii but we learn in terms of covalent radii covalent radius van der waals radius metallic radius and ionic radius so what actually is covalent radius first we will draw the diagram and understand suppose i have two covalently bonded atoms this is one atom right there is one more atom which is covalently bonded the center of the nucleus is here yes now the covalently bonded atom let us make a boundary like this right i'm not drawing it to the scale please don't mind so this one and this is one line and i'm making one more line now this is your covalent radii now just see i'm drawing the diagram and explain it is half covalent radius definition is half of the distance between two successive nuclei okay once again this is half isn't it it is half of the distance between two successive nuclei and these nuclei what are they how are they bonded they are bonded covalently by a covalent bond isn't it yes right it can be like uh, it is called basically these are also called a single bond covalent radius once again what is covalent radius covalent radius is a it is the half of the distance yeah between two successive nuclei but what are they they are bonded by a covalent bond okay they are bonded by covalent that's why they are called as single co-bond covalent radius 
suppose if the bond length between two atoms suppose let me take if the bond length between two atoms is a a and a these two are two atoms a a is small a i'm going to take this as small b then what is the formula for finding covalent radius covalent radius covalent radius that is it is denoted by r covalent it is given by or it's half into it is internuclear distance between two covalently bonded atoms okay i'm writing that it is half into internuclear distance between two covalently bonded atoms bonded atoms that covalently bonded atoms should be similar atoms minus half into a right so it is half of the distance and the formula for calculating covalent radius is this so half minus half into nuclear distance uh, between two covalent atoms as the two covalently bonded similar atoms that is minus half into a that is the formula when you are given a numerical you can directly apply the formula and write now i have to learn about van der waals radius let us draw the diagram and understand now i am drawing one bond now again i am drawing one more atom both are bonded right now let us draw the bond here in this way and one more atom this is also bonded this is also bonded so this is one and this is one now let us make one line here let us make one line from here till here this is called van der waals radius okay this is what radius this is van der uh, this is van der waals this is vr we can also write it as r van both are same so how am i defining van der waals radius is it is half of the distance between it is half isn't it half of it this is bonded this is half of it half of the distance or one half of the distance between two nuclei of non bonded isolated adjacent atoms once again van der waals radius is half of the distance between the nuclei of two non bonded isolated they are far away adjacent atoms belonging to neighboring molecules of an element of a solid state so the half of the distance is that particular half of the distance is called van der waals radius so hope students it is clear if you want i'll repeat it again please note it is one half of the distance between two nuclei of two non bonded isolated adjacent atoms belonging to two neighboring molecules two neighboring molecules that is van der waals radius now let us draw metallic radius here again i am taking an atom then i am taking one more atom here the distance between these two this is called rm r means between metallic radius now how should you define it is half of the distance between any two successive nuclei because that is into the successive nuclei of which one of two metal atoms because it is metal these are all metal atoms so metal atoms in where are they placed in a closely packed crystal lattice so once again metallic radius is half of the distance between any two successive nuclei okay of two adjacent metal atoms in a closely packed crystal lattice that is called metallic radius hope this is clear students so i am just going with the definition because there is no place i am not writing the uh, thing here and i hope it is clear for you all let me i think this okay so let us write the last one that is your ionic radius so what is ionic radius basically it is the effective distance between center of the nucleus okay let us write it is a effective distance from center of the nuclei of an ion up to which it's it has the influence of the over the cloud uh, electron cloud Okay, is effective distance in the center of the nucleus. Okay, of an ion up to which it has an influence over electron cloud. Over electron cloud. So that is called ionic radius. So basically, remember one important thing, students. Always you have to remember van der Waals radius. is 
greater than metallic radius which is greater than anionic radius which is greater than covalent radius which is greater than cationic radius remember right so let us see what uh, like already i have given you uh, the factors affecting size what are the factors affecting size the factors affecting size are this is a defective that is nuclear charge number of orbits inner shells electron repulsions bond order all these i have already discussed in the inorganic series too so please watch the video students with this i am done with the concept of size now we will start with the different questions based on concept of size all the reasoning questions which are there in jd lee so thank you for watching students stay connected any doubts please mention in the comment section yes now let's come back and see the next reasoning question in your uh, inorganic chemistry right, last last question what do we see we have seen a question based on size that was the concept simple question let's read the next question so why is atomic radio of inert gases greater okay how can we justify that they've already given the values see here when i compare group 17 and group 18 the, the halogens if i see fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine <coughs> it is only 0 0.72 for fluorine 0 0.99 for chlorine 1.14 and 1.33 i can immediately if I go to the next group that is inert gas elements in the periodic table this is 0.72 this is there is an increase 0 0.99 there is an increase 1.14 there is an increase 1.33 is an increase so what does it mean fluor from bromine iodine and acetogen okay what did, what are they asking why is that atomic radius greater so basically when we are supposed to reason a question we should have a basic data what is the basic data normally what type of radius different types of radius we have uh, studied we have studied about metallic radius okay right about metallic radii we have studied about covalent radii we have studied about what van der waals radii We have studied about cationic radii, isn't it? Um, like the type types in the atomic radii. So what do we have? Metallic we have done, Van der Waals we have done, covalent we have done, cationic we have done, right? Okay atomic radii also done so these are the different types of radii now whenever they are asking you about inert gases remember in, when normally whenever we speak we speak about covalent radii two bonded atoms together but in case of inert gases we are basically we need to concentrate or we need to speak in terms of van der waals radius only remember that what is the sequence we already know the sequence is van der waals radius this is your sequence which you should remember always remember vr means Van der Waals radius is greater, sorry, than metallic radius, greater than atomic radii, greater than <coughs> covalent radii, greater than cationic radii. This is the sequence always remember. Now, in case of inert gases, what are we trying to consider? We are trying to consider Van der Waals radius. So, isn't it maximum? Van der Waals radius is maximum. That is the reason that inert gases have higher atomic radii. So, just you want to write the answer like this. You need to start solution. According to this sequence, you write the sequence or you write the order, then since in the inert gases, the non-bonded electrons, because inert gases are, uh, they don't bond, they don't form bond formation, isn't it? Right. So, in inert gases, instead of atomic radii <coughs> or it if I have to say covalent radii also, we don't speak about covalent radii because there is no bonding form. Instead of covalent radii, what are we going to take? Let us take this out and write instead of covalent radii, Van der Waals radius is taken into consideration into covalent radii instead of, so underline this word. What is considered? <coughs> Van der Waals radii is considered. So according to this order, what is the first one? Van der Waals radius is greater. Hence, inert gases have larger atomic radii. You need to conclude your answer like that. Right. 
Now, one more question which is based on your in, uh, concept of size or atomic radii. Let us see this question see how to answer this question. What do they give us? Why are metal ions smaller than atom from which they are formed? Very nice easily given question but you need to write the proper in the proper way to give or relate to the question. Let us read. What do they say? Why are metal ions smaller? Which metal ions are smaller? Basically, when we have when we speak about ionic compounds, you have a cation as well as anion. Cations are smaller than anions isn't it they are speaking about that metal ion this is what is the ion done so let us have that in the mind cations are smaller than anions this is your metal ion which they are going to we are speaking about done now when i have to see the data just see here sodium atom 1.86 angstroms when it has lost one electron that means when it is forming a cation it has uh, become 1.02 the atomic radius has reduced that is what they are asking if i speak about iron the iron atom the uh, atomic radius 1.17 angstroms but when it has lost two electrons it has become 0.78 when it has lost the third electron it has become 0.645 why is it smaller that is how you, you need to give the reason for that right i have this concept let us start the answer first of all whenever i am removing an electron from a particular atom what will happen to the nucleus what what is the effect of nucleus that is how you going to answer let's start whenever an electron is removed from an atom okay what will happen the number of electron you are removing but the number of protons will become more than the electron isn't it because you are taking out that electron so number of protons will number of protons are more than electrons now when the protons are more and then electrons what will happen to the z effective charge this electron is removed but protons are more than this so now your concept is you need to if in your write your answer z effective this is the keyword z effective starts increasing what is the effective the effect or the nuclear pull of the proton towards the electron which is there in the outermost orbit or the outer shells so z effective increases isn't it when z effective increases what will happen to the atomic radii atomic radii decreases isn't it because there is effective pull that means the other way around i can write if you don't if you don't have time to write the complete answer number of protons increases number of electron decreases so Z effective increases, atomic radiate decreases. This is how you have to write. So that is the reason when I see the particular metal atom, metal ion, Fe is greater in size than Fe plus 2 which is greater in size than Fe plus 3. And the way around if you have to write for sodium, <coughs> sodium is greater than Na plus cation. This is how you are going to write the answer. Right. Uh, one more question based on the size. So, in the earlier question, what did we learn? Why is a metal ion, what is that metal ion? Cation, smaller than its corresponding atom. Suppose if this question is given, it's the same way, but we are talking about anion. But here, you should, uh, why am I giving the same question in different ways? I, your, the examiner wants you to give the keywords which are relevant to that. Inorganic chemistry basically is giving the keywords in the exam is important. Done. So, what did they give? Why are negative ions? Nothing but anions bigger than the corresponding atoms. If I see here, here, why did I take covalent radii? Basically, basically, chlorine, one chlorine, one chlorine, they form a covalent bonding and then the rate that particular radii is called covalent radii. How much is that? It is 0.99 angstroms. But when it comes to Cl minus, now I have to write ionic radii because it has already formed an anion. The radii has increased to 1.84 angstroms. That is what they are asking. Why is it increasing here? Let us write the answer. So, what happens? Whenever I speak about negative ion, <coughs> just write, when an electron adds to an atom. So, what is electron adding to an atom? That means, if I take a, metal, uh, a particular atom, I am adding one electron to this. So, immediately what happens? It becomes M minus, nothing but you are adding. So, this is an anion which is formed. So, when an electron adds to the atom, what will happen? There is increase in number of shells. Means, uh, you are adding electron one after the other. There is an expansion of electron cloud or not? Let us write that. 
there is and let us put this in a box expansion of <coughs> electron cloud when there is an expansion of electron cloud z effective will decrease or increase z effective will automatically decrease because number of electrons are more than the number of protons so what will happen z effective is less that obvious done so this because of this expansion of electron cloud or z effective the effective nuclear charge is less <laughs> negative ions are bigger then corresponding atom this is okay this is simpler way to write now how will you justify how will you write in the form of a uh, order always you need to write an order give an example always so i'm justifying the whole answer with this now i have m minus 4 then i have m minus 3 then i have m minus 2 anion then i have m minus 1 anion then metal now tell me the order according to this the anion would be larger i said so among all these this is the largest anion so the radio will be more this is greater this is greater this is greater so this is how it shows the anion has a larger radii than its corresponding atom why this is the reason right one more question based on your uh, atomic radii now a very interesting question this is they've given us a series once such questions are given you don't get confused and don't get panic first try to understand the concept everything a small little bit co small concept will be hidden in there if you understand the concept it is easy to answer that what is it given why is c minus 4 i minus 4 ion greater in ionic radii compared to m plus 5 ion according to the order right they have given us a comparison between c minus 4 and and mn plus 5 okay right <coughs> this order just see here maximum is c minus 4 where is our mn mn is here why is that you're asking first of all just observe carefully they've given us a series of ions here what are the ions first of all take the ions and just start writing the electronic configuration once the electronic configuration is written all the whole answer will be easy for you to write suppose if i take the first one c minus 4 let me take randomly 5 or 6 okay f minus here minus 5 minus 3 minus 2 minus okay i picked up randomly some now here if it is minus 4 it is 6 isn't it normally uh, atomic number done what is this minus 4 that means you need to take out this two electron okay minus 4 this side isn't it okay not to take out you need to add 2p2 that means you are adding plus 4 electrons to this. Okay. Next. 1 is 2. This is 7. 2 is 2. 2p. 4. 4, 5, 6, 7. 2p3 is it? 2p3. Because 3, 4, 5. Here they have added 3 electrons. Now let's count. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 electrons are there here. In this case, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 electrons here okay right now let us take one more example fluorine atomic number 9 1 is 2 2 is 2 2p <coughs> uh, 6 6 7 8 9 so this is 2p 5 2p 5 6 7 8 how many one electron now count 5 plus 1 6 6 plus 4 10 here also 10 electrons so what are these all these elements all these elements or the, all these ions are isoelectronic species so isoelectronic means what the ions which have same number of electrons isn't it so first immediately right all above are isoelectronic you can compare all all will be isoelectronic only isoelectronic species what are isoelectronic having same number of electrons done now according to this concept what is this isoelectronic species what is the order whenever you have an isoelectronic species the order is always m minus 4 here because you have started with 4 i'm going to take that 4 first right m n minus 4 greater than m minus 3 greater than m minus 2 all these are uh, elements 
greater than m plus 1 greater than m plus 2 which is greater than m plus 3 like that plus 4 plus 5 go till this plus 5 so according to this order isn't it c minus 4 greater than m n plus 5 that is what so since this is the order what is m minus 4 it is c minus 4 the uh, last one m minus uh, this one will be m n plus 5 so just conclude this is your answer first you need to write like this show them the number of electrons then you say these are isoelectronic species and have same number of electrons finally write the order and hence conclude your answer saying that c minus 4 is greater than mn plus 5 all right now one more question of your <coughs> jd lee uh, book what is shoemaker and stevenson formula so this is not there in the ncrt but simple formula which you can remember and you can apply it in the numerical given to you so basically we very well know what the different types of uh, atomic radii covalent radii ionic radii van der waals radius anionic radius cationic radius isn't it right suppose if a covalent bond is formed let's see if a covalent bond is formed when is the covalent bond formed when there is sharing of electrons right and if this covalent bond is formed between two elements which have an electronegativity difference that is the concept here done if a covalent bond is formed between two elements okay let me take those two elements as a and b if this covalent bond is between formed between two elements which has an electronegativity difference or there is a difference in the electronegative values electro negativity difference then we write or we use shoemaker and stevenson formula so what is the formula let us write that so what did i say i said two covalent bonds two elements a and b so a b this is the thing what is the formula first you need to take the radii of both r a plus r b minus 0 0.99 and you are going to take <coughs> the uh, electronegativity values x a minus x b so what are x a and x b x a and x b are electronegative values of a and b that's it this is the thing so you take that substitute in this formula you will get the shoemaker formula you will get that particular element covalently bonded this is covalent bonding isn't it so that covalently bonded element with a lot of difference in the electron gravity, you get the answer directly right now let's come back and see one more question based on your ionic radii what is this arrange the following according to the ionic radii so nothing to do. just remember one logic always when such question is given nothing to write the electronic number nothing to write with the configuration just a simple among all these pick up the ion which is the which is the least means lesser charge so start writing the answer then we will reason it so which is arrange the following according to the increasing order they have not given me in, uh, in this one so i will write increasing order not a problem both you can write so whichever is least pick up cr plus 2 after plus 2 is plus 3 then plus 4 then plus 5 then plus 6 so this is greater 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 in ion gradient which is this is larger this has larger radii larger ionic radii this has least ionic radii now reason it how can i write the reason <clears throat> when two electrons are removed from here what will happen to the effective nuclear charge number of protons will increase isn't it so it will start pulling the particular ion uh, anion very means the outer shell or there is decrease in the size now here further you are removing more and more electrons if you are removing more and more electrons z effective will be more in that isn't it now see, again the c you are removing two electrons so z effective increases and it tries to drag the electrons because in z effective what we have we have protons which drag these electrons further when you are removing six electrons what will happen z effective is maximum when z effective is maximum that means number of protons number of protons also is more when the number of protons are more it starts dragging the electrons towards it so what will happen to the atomic radii so the ionic radii it will become so ionic means there is a compression it starts dragging so there is a compression in the size 
so ionic radii reduces that's it so that's how you're going to write the answer Now, after a size uh, that is the atomic radii, choline radii, ionic radii, or cationic radii, or the anionic radii, uh, <coughs> let us come back to the next concept that is ionization enthalpy. Okay, ionization enthalpy it is also denoted as I dot T or ionization potential. First, we will understand the concept, but remember, I have done a series called inorganic series 2. In that, I have discussed all the trends of all these. First, watch that video and please come back to this. Then, what is ionization enthalpy? Right, you will have to start the definition with this energy released okay energy released when is this energy released when you are or uh, if I have to write like this energy required to remove an electron okay let us not write release let us write energy required to remove an electron from an neutral gaseous atom okay so what are what is this what does it mean suppose if i have an atom i'm denoting by m this is in gaseous state now what am i going to do i'm going to remove an electron from this so i'm adding minus electron okay if i'm adding a little plus i'm taking out this when i'm removing an electron it will become plus and the energy which is this is called ie1 ionization energy one I am taking the same metal plus again I am removing an electron so this becomes m plus 2 this is called ionization energy 2 suppose if I am taking the same I am removing one more electron it will become m plus 3 ionization energy 3 it goes on like that done now according to the sequence <coughs> what is that it is always ie1 is greater than okay if I have to say right let us assume whether it is greater or not more and more uh, you need to remove electron from the ion which is difficult is this is uh, difficult or this is difficult right so um, if i have to speak about the concept let us assume in this way smaller the size more and more smaller it's becoming for me it's very difficult to take out the electron so remember ie3 values are greater than ie2 values are greater than ie1 values so what is the unit for measuring this you can measure ionization enthalpy as electron volt per mole kilo calorie per mole or kilo joule per mole these are the units right so now we've already seen what is ionization enthalpy now let's start solving questions based on ionization enthalpy what are the different types of questions asked let's see the question first ionization enthalpy of 2a is greater than 3a 5a is greater than 6a they've given us so as I, as i said everything is related around your electronic configuration only so we very well know ionization in energy what actually is ionization energy which you have seen in the earlier video now so i need to compare so when i have to compare what is 2a basically let us write the configuration this is 3a 5a and 6a 2a configuration it's nothing but general configuration it is ns2 3a configuration it is ns2 np1 because 3a means 2 plus 1 3 in 5a configuration it is ns2 and np3 6a configuration is ns2 and np4 isn't it done now here when i see ns2 they said this is greater than this when I compare, they said this is greater means more amount of energy is required to remove an electron, they said. Now here what is this NS2? This is completely filled, isn't it? This configuration is completely filled. This is unstable. When I say completely filled, it is stable. Done. In this case, it is half filled half filled when it is half filled completely filled and half filled are always stable now this is unstable it is incompletely filled now we very well know half fulfilled or completely filled as is half filled configurations they require more energy to remove an electron yes done so just start uh, answering now right completely filled i'm writing shortcuts and half filled configurations 
require more ionization enthalpies hence hence 2a and 5a have greater ionization enthalpy compared to 3a and 4a okay 3a and 4a that's it simple isn't it this is how you're going to write the answer right now let us do one more question based on ionization enthalpy what is the question what does it say why is there a large difference of first and second ionization enthalpy related to group 1 elements i think they have said group 1 elements ionization enthalpy values are different very much large uh, i to i uh, ionization energy two values let us write the reason simple so when i take group 1 what is the configuration it is nothing but the first group that is your 1a group a simple example if i take like lithium suppose right <clears throat> atomic number hydrogen helium lithium 3 it is 1 is 2 2 is 1 right now this is 1 done so this is your configuration if i take suppose if this configuration in this i'm going to take out i'm going to use ionization enthalpy 1 and take out this electron that's okay now after that i'm going to use ionization enthalpy 2 values and take out one electron from here so finally what happens i 1 is 1 this is the configuration now important thing is they are asking why is this value more than this why is i2 value greater than i1 simple reason what are you observing first time when i am removing one electron it's easy for me to take out i can easily remove but second time when i am trying to remove an electron from this completely filled shell there is lot amount of z effective which is acting the proton which is present in the nucleus starts dragging this electron when it starts dragging the electron obviously ionization to enthalpy value or the ionization energy values will be more than ionization one isn't it let us write the whole in the form of an answer just write on point number one ionization one by uh, or ionization enthalpy value one is less since it is easier to remove one electron now second case i2 values are higher why you need to break the bond isn't it right when it is an i2 values it requires uh, it requires to overcome more z effective z effective charge which is pulling that hence Okay, more uh, Z effective. Okay, what is Z effective here? It has more of protons. So, because of this Z effective nature, what will happen? I require a lot amount of energy to pull that electron out. So, that's the reason why IE2 is greater than IE1. Right. Now, let's see one more question based on your ionization enthalpy. What did they give me? Predict the order of ionization enthalpy of SPDF orbital. Simple. So, whenever I have to write SPDF order, just compare S. Write like this, P, D and F. So, I have to write the order. So, I very well know ionization enthalpy is amount of energy released when an electron is removed from its valence shell. Okay. That means from a neutral gaseous atom. So, among all these, which is closer to the nucleus? Yes. So, which will require more amount of ionization enthalpy? Yes. After that, P is closer. So, this will require. After that, D. So, this will require. Then, F. So, what can you write? Since S orbital is closer to the nucleus, Z effective is maximum on S electrons that is the nuclear pull effective nuclear charge is more on S electrons then on P electrons then D electrons and then finally F electrons hence this is the order right now one more question which is based on ionization enthalpy now this is a graph which is there in your jdla let us write what are we supposed to explain from this graph so suppose that this graph is given to us and <coughs> explained the trends in 
ionization enthalpy from the graph this is the question okay let's start so what did i do i have marked all the peaks okay now basically i picked up some peaks and i've marked the depths also right peaks are also there even the depth also crust and trough just like that right now first of all when i see at the peak level this is helium neon argon krypton xenon all the inert gases are higher let's pick up two so if i take neon and argon why is the peak highest why is the ionization enthalpy maximum high here this is ionization enthalpy this is atomic number why is it maximum because of so ionization enthalpy maximum what is the reason because of stable electronic configuration there is a first one over now again nitrogen and phosphorus they also have so let's write about nitrogen atomic number 7 phosphorus 15 so what's happening here 1s2 2s2 2p3 15 in this case 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p3 here this is half filled this also is half filled so what happens in this case in nitrogen phosphorus what is the concept half filled configuration when it is half filled what will happen ionization enthalpy will be more because they are stable enough done now this is over this is over this is over let us come back to uh, uh, boron and aluminium so boron and aluminium if i take this is 5 this is 13 1 is 2 2 is 2 2 p 1 now here in this case 1 is 2 2 is 2 2 p 6 3 is 2 3 p 1 13 isn't it now what happened suppose if I'm using the first ionization enthalpy then I'm taking out the first ion using and taking out this electron here also I'm using first ionization enthalpy I'm taking this electron now what happened I said ionization enthalpy values are lower in this easily I can take out this loosely held electron here also I can take out this loosely held electron isn't it and the leftover is stable configuration not a problem so what why is this ionization value low it is low because it is easy to remove loosely held electron that's it isn't it so that is the concept so i have marked we have discussed about helium neon argon here we have discussed about nitrogen phosphorus zinc and all these here okay beryllium also it comes in the same category height then i have discussed about two depths that is boron aluminium potassium gallium if you write the configuration reason would be the same it is easy to remove a loosely held electron that's the reason ionization enthalpy values are low for this because of the completely filled as well as stable configuration the ionization enthalpy values are higher for them One more question based on your ionization enthalpy. Let's read the question. Why is there a marked difference in ionization enthalpy values from gallium, indium, and thallium? Right. So here they've given us values. What are the values? They've picked up group 13, isn't it? Boron, yeah. Group 13, boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, and thallium. Done. First ionization enthalpy value is given. Second is given. Third is given. They're asking us why is the difference in gallium? What is the difference? Let's see. Normally when I move from top to bottom in a group, what will happen? Atomic number increases when atomic number increases it's easy for me to take out the electron because the number of shells increases when the number of shells increases with less energy only i can take out the electron but what is happening here it was 801 then they should decrease which is 577 good it has decreased from 577 it should become 574 or something but it has gone to 579 then after that again it has decreased then after 558 it has gone to 589 isn't it increasing decreasing there's a lot of variation that is what they asked why is the difference now when i have to speak about gallium they have asked me from gallium let's see if i have to speak about gallium that is group 13 before gallium what elements do we have we have scandium to zinc which series is this this is first transition series first transition series now what is filled here 3d electrons are filled now after that in indium we have from yttrium to cadmium this is the second transition series Next, if I have to speak about tellurium, it is from lanthanum to, uh, this is mercury, this is your third transition series. Done. Now, what's happening here every time, electron or there is an addition of electron, that is addition of electron is 3D subshell. I need to take out electron and that effect is always observed in gallium, which is immediately after zinc. 
gallium here what do you have uh, indium here what do you have you have mercury but here what is happening apart from that when it is mercury the, uh, this particular thing uh, tellurium i'm sorry this is tellurium what happens here there is a concept called lanthanide contraction which is active so lanthanide contraction is ineffective shielding of electrons because of this lanthanide contraction the, thus that effect is observed in tellurium also that because of this the there is lower amount of energy which is required to take out that electron so here you should just write the first reason that because of the filling of 3d electrons first reason second would reason would be tellurium has higher energy that is 590 589 kilojoules per mole why due to lanthanide contraction observed so what actually is lanthanide contraction i have explained for grade 12 students that is there in f block elements in the playlist i have given a clear explanation about lanthanide contraction please watch the video for that right we have seen different questions based on ionization enthalpy now let us finish up the concept of ionization enthalpy with this question what is importance of low ionization enthalpy or low ionization enthalpy right so uh, important like just they are asking you if a particular element has low ionization enthalpy what is its advantage or where is it used so whichever element has low ionization enthalpy value that means with less energy i can remove that electron what is the important property those particular elements they have or they act as good reducing agents that is the one important and they possess ionic character and they are mostly basic in nature and simple they form cations because i'm taking out one electron they form cations next they show photoelectric effect because i can take out that electron easily they exhibit show photo electric effect so these are the concepts with all these due to the low ionization enthalpy this is what is a concept this is the importance of having low ionization enthalpy values Right. after ionization enthalpy let us start learning the concept of electron affinity already in the inorganic series 2 i have done the tricks how to remember or how to solve the questions when electron affinity values are given to you right so now electron affinity what is the definition let's see right suppose if i take a metal atom now what am i going to do or an element or an atom rather i'm going to add one electron to this means accepting this electron what will happen it becomes m minus and now the amount of energy released here during this process is called electron affinity it we also call it as electron gain enthalpy done so how can i define the energy released when an electron or when a neutral atom let us write like that this is neutral isn't it when an neutral isolated atom accepts electron right simple same thing i am taking m minus i am adding one more electron it becomes m minus 2 so electron affinity is e2 the same thing i am taking m minus 2 i am adding one more electron <coughs> this becomes m minus 2 3 e3 all these are electron affinity values what are the units for measuring them i can measure electron affinity by electron volt per atom same like ionization enthalpy it can be kilojoules per mole or kilo calories per mole also right now let's start coming let's start uh, solving different different reasoning questions based on electron affinity these are some of the electron affinity values so we said electron affinity or electron gain enthalpy both are same right so in electron gain enthalpy also we have two different types so that is positive electron gain enthalpy and negative electron gain enthalpy right so here when i see the values there are some negative values there are some positive values also so basically from where do we get electron affinity values we can get indirectly from von haber cycle so i already did a video based on von haber cycle just watch the video please done so here 
this negative electron gain enthalpy right this one whenever you're getting negative electron gain enthalpy that means energy is released this is called negative electron gain enthalpy and suppose if you have positive value it is called energy is absorbed it is positive electron gain enthalpy values now see here when I take this example, suppose when I am adding one electron to oxygen, it is becoming O minus. During that process, electric energy is released. But the same thing, if I am further taking out, means if I am further adding one more electron to this, the same thing I am taking here, that means it is like this, O minus. I am adding one more electron, it is absorbing energy. So, it's where it's, if first, of, first time, it is easy, I, energy is released. But second time to add, I need to supply some energy so that it is adding the electron. So, there are two types of electron gain enthalpies positive electron gain enthalpy as well as negative gain electron gain enthalpy so we've already seen uh, the definition of electron effect in the previous video students so welcome back today we'll be almost completing the chapter i think yes so today let us see the factors affecting electron affinity so it is also called as electron gain enthalpy isn't it right the first factor uh, affecting the electron affinity just remember these tricks very important electron affinity is inversely related to atomic size that Next important factor, which I have already explained in the tricks of inorganic series, electron affinity is directly proportional to Z effective, that is effective nuclear charge. If this is more, this also the value also will be more. Third important thing, electron affinity is inversely related to 1 by screening effect. I have already explained by others why is this inversely related, why is this directly related in the uh, trick series. Last but not the least, the fourth one. Electron affinity value is directly related, oh, sorry, inversely related to 1 by stable electronic configuration. Stable electronic configuration. Now, so, first of all, the electron, like these uh, concepts, please go back to the inorganic series, that is your trick series, where I have explained the concept one after the other. As of now, just I gave you the concept here. Now, next important thing, I just mentioned it here but explanation please understand go to the video watch it and then you will have an understanding about this here for noble gases for the uh, inert gases the electron affinity inert gases is zero isn't it why because of the configuration that is well, what is the configuration ns2 np6 configuration isn't it so there is no possibility of adding extra electron right that is the first important so let us write that noble gases electron affinity value is 0. Done. Second thing, electron affinity value of, uh, if I have to say affinity value of magnesium, beryllium is practically 0. 0. Why? Because extra stability of the completely filled shell. Okay, let us write that. Due to extra stability of completely filled S orbital, isn't it? S orbitals. Because if I take magnesium, 12, 1 is 2, 2 is 2, 2s2, 2, 2p6, 3s2. Completely filled, isn't it? That's the concept. Suppose if an atom has half filled orbits, then electron affinity value will be very low right so that also is one more concept where what am i saying suppose if i take fifth group fifth group elements so in fifth group elements when i take fifth group then here uh, it is uh, basically now uh, you have the half filled electrons that is suppose if i take 1s2 2s2 2p1 fine Right. First of all, let's see. Uh, let us take an example of the fifth group elements, and then right. So now, normally, when I take a fifth group element in the periodic table, hope you have, you would have seen the video of the periodic classification of elements, students. <laughs> in that uh, periodic classification of elements, your first group uh, is your uh, uh, alkali metals. Second is your alkaline earth metals. Uh, okay. Third, uh, fourth, like that. Suppose if I take the fifth group elements boron 
atomic number 5. So, let us write boron 5, um, 1 is 2, 2 is 2, this is only the same thing I have already written. So, uh, the half filled uh, shell of this, half filled orbits of this, the affinity will be very very less because of the half filled truths. Now, let us see one more important uh, concept, variation of electron affinity value. Let me take out this page, let me see, variation of value or of electron affinity in a period and in a group. So, let us write the heading, variation of electron affinity in a period. First, we will see in a period, then we will go to a group, right, fine. So, when I speak about a period, electron affinity value, when I move from left to right, what is happening? The size is decreasing. When the size is de decreasing, what will happen to the effective nuclear charge, Z effective, that increases. So, in a period from left to right, what will happen? First concept, atomic size decreases. When atomic size decreases, what will happen to Z effective? Z effective increases, isn't it? Then that means nuclear pull is increases. So, what is the uh, trend? Halogens will have more electron affinity value than oxygen family, oxygen family, then greater than carbon family, greater than nitrogen family, nitrogen family, greater than metals of group 1 and 12, uh, sorry, 13 greater than metals of group 2 greater than 0 group. This is the concept. Yes. So, this is the order basically based on the, the effective size and uh, sorry, so atomic size as well as Z effective. Done. Suppose if I take the uh, trend, the electron affinity trend in the second period. So, trend of electron affinity in second period. When I take the second period uh, concept, so what are the elements? So, basically perihelium will be less than nitrogen less than lithium less than boron less than carbon less than oxygen less than fluorine suppose if i take this is your second period now if i take the third period concept and see let's see third period magnesium will be less than sodium less than aluminium less than phosphorus less than silicon less than sulfur than chlorine so, according to the concept and the, according to the size, this is a trend in a period. Suppose if I have to write the trend in a group, right? What happens in a group? In a group, when I move from top to bottom, first size increases. When size increases, what will happen to Z effective? The pull of the nuclear charge decreases. What will happen to the electron affinity? value electron affinity value also decreases done so let's see the exceptional cases in case of electron value okay effective exceptional cases because these questions only will be asked in the exam exceptional cases remaining all normal trends i don't think they will question you but exceptional cases will be given in the cbc exam as well as your competitive exam also so in exceptional cases Electron affinity of fluorine is less than that of chlorine, of carbon less than the silicon, nitrogen is less than phosphorus, oxygen less than sulfur, right. So, the, the, uh, the such exception cases here you have to remember. So, in case of uh, second period also, because the size is less, the very smaller size isn't it and the electron repulsion is more. The addition of uh, uh, this excess, uh, extra electron will become very difficult. So, this is uh, a basic information students. So, remember one important thing. The sequence of electron affinity. Suppose if I have to write seventh group. I am writing it here only because the exceptions also 
in the, the seventh group order is iodine less than bromine less than fluorine less than chlorine right now one important thing you should remember in electron uh, uh, this one electron affinity concept very important thing to remember remember this because they will ask you very important what is that L, um, oxidizing power oxidizing power of element is directly related to electron affinity remember this very very important next thing you have to remember is reactivity of non metals is directly related to electron affinity right so these are the two important things which you should remember under electron affinity so if you remember the trends any question asked from any part is easy for you all thank you for watching students i'll meet you again in the next topic that is electronegativity welcome back students to one more topic of your periodic properties that is your electronegativity so in the previous class i've taught you what is electron affinity or electron gain enthalpy what are the trends to be followed now we'll be studying about the complete concept of electronegativity so in this concept what what will, will i teach you will i'll be teaching you about the definition i'll be teaching about uh, the polling scale i'll be also giving you the concept of alred and Ro uh, rocher's method how to find the electronegativity value millikan's method also i'll discuss after that i'll be discussing about the factors affecting electronegativity then i'll be taking you how is electronegativity value varying in a group and a period finally we'll end up the electronegativity concept with the applications of electronegativity so basically whenever you're learning a concept try to learn it completely then yes so let's start so electronegativity first of all uh, this concept of electronegativity was got or was uh, brought into effect by pauling right so he has explained pauling has given us in which year in 1931 he said what is electron definition it is a power or the tendency of an atom all right in a molecule to attract the shared pair of electron towards it once again let us write the definition it is electron activity it is the power or tendency of an atom in a molecule to attract the shared pair of electron shared pair of electrons towards itself okay right this is the concept done now here after writing the definition we will uh, as i said i'll be teaching you about uh, millikan scale uh, millikan's method or pauling's method and alred uh, rocher's method now before going to the concept let me teach you what are the factors which affect electronegativity now we said it is a tendency to drag the electron suppose if i have hcl now this is more electronegative it tries to drag so the tendency to attract the shared pair of electron towards itself is electronegativity first of all when i have to speak about the factors affecting electronegativity factors it is a affecting electronegativity the first important factor as i've shown you as i said whenever a particular element has maximum electronegativity when will that have if the z effective is uh, what do you say strong done right so once again first factor is electronegativity is directly related to z effective it is again inversely related to size the first concept which is remember next important now again i'm uh, in expect explaining the same the whole explanation for this concept is done in the inorganic series or uh, inorganic trick series please watch that video there i've given the complete explanation here i'm directly writing it now next electronegativity is directly related to ionization enthalpy 
and also directly related to electron affinity. Last but not the least, this particular thing depends on the charge also. How electronegativity is directly related to the charge, charge of atom. Which charge? If I take positive charge. Okay, right. So, students, please watch that inorganic trick series where I'm explaining that because I'm just writing it here, but I've given one one explanation in that concept. Now, let's see how is this electronegativity varying in a group and in a period. Suppose if I take a period, okay, so what will happen when I move from left to right? What is happening? As I said, electronegativity is directly related to Z effective. I said that. So, from left to right in a period, what will happen to this atomic size? Atomic size decreases. When atomic size decreases, what will happen to Z effective? Z effective increases. When Z effective increases, what will happen to electronegativity? Electronegativity also increases. Let's start. Suppose if I have to take the order for first electron in any period. So, 1A is less than 2A, this is minimum value, less than 3A, less than 4A, less than 5A, less than 6A, less than 7A. This is maximum. Right? Suppose if I have to take an example and explain you all. What actually is this? Just see. Suppose if I take an example like lithium, lithium less than beryllium, less than boron, less than carbon, less than nitrogen, less than oxygen, less than fluorine. Suppose if I take in terms of sodium, less than magnesium, less than aluminium, next is silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. So, in any period, what will happen? Maximum halogens will have. So, whenever they give you a halogen, you should say whichever is towards the left, uh, right hand extreme in the periodic table, that will have maximum electronegativity. Alkali metals have minimum electronegativity. So, what will happen to the zero group elements? So, let us take this as next example. For zero group elements, Electronegativity value is 0 since they have stable configuration, isn't it? And they were they have no tendency to attract electrons, they don't require an electron only. They just the electronegativity value will remain 0 for noble gas elements. Suppose if I have to take the same concept in a group, right? The same thing in a group. So, what will happen from top to bottom? Atomic size increases when the atomic size increases what will happen to z effective z effective decreases right so when i as i said en is directly related to z effective so when z effective decreases electronegativity value also decreases that means when i take an example fluorine greater than chlorine greater than bromine greater than iodine if i'm taking a group it goes like this, isn't it? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Next, oxygen greater than sulfur is greater than selenium, greater than tellurium. Nitrogen is greater than phosphorus, greater than arsenic, greater than sp. Right. So, remember students in a group and in a period. But most important thing which you should remember during your uh, uh, concept of electronegativity is see remember this concept very very important thing to remember first of all all the metalloids have nearly two values of electronegativity almost almost nearly two values very close by values right and the remember this electronegativity value of oxygen nitrogen chlorine Carbon B, very important a trend. 4, this is 3.5, 3, 2.97, 2.5, and 2. So, this value is very important for you all because most of the questions they'll be asking you from this factor only. 
right now let us see the applications of electronegativity right students let us write the heading applications of electronegativity where 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 is electronegativity used so let us write the heading applications of electro negativity right so electronegativity basically um, i can use it i can use it for calculating partial ionic character so means I, how much is because we, whichever is maximum electronegative it will try to drag the electrons so i can use it for calculation of ionic partial ionic character so partial ionic character correct so on which what is the depend this depends upon electronegativity difference this depends upon dipole moment of the compound also next i can use electronegativity for calculating bond strength how can i use this let's see this uh, the electronegativity difference is directly proportional to the bond strength the difference of this so more uh, more is the electronegativity difference more is the strength of that for example hf is greater hcl greater hbr greater than hi now what did i say the difference of electronegativity is that the proportion to bond strength remember that next i can also denote the bond angle okay bond angle is directly related to electronegativity here also the same thing directly related so what happens in case of fifth and sixth group uh, bond angle dec uh, decreases down the group why as electronegativity the central atom also decreases let us take examples if i take ammonia greater than phosphine greater than ash3 greater than sbh3 so what is the bond angle 107 degree what is the bond angle here 93 degree here it is 91.8 degree so here it is 91.3 degree so this is your bond angle trend so bond angle is directly related to electronegativity remember that so these this is the concept of electronegativity these are the factors and these are the applications of electronegativity students so i'll meet you again in my next video with mallikan scale uh, pauling scale as well as as i said it is a bit difficult to pronounce alred and rocher's method thank you for watching so welcome back students after electron affinity and electronegativity now we will be learning the last topic of the chapter that is nomenclature of elements with atomic number so um, iupac basically see we get the terminology the, the naming starts uh, is being given by iupac isn't it it is international unified for pure and applied chemistry right so iupac proposes a system for naming elements that is with atomic number greater than 100 so let us see the rules what is that first of all the names are derived by using roots with the three digit number so what am i trying to explain let's see so for zero you are going to use it as nil for one un for two by three means try four a squad five is pent six is hex seven is sept 8 is oct, 9 is n, e n n, right, right, so this is what IUPAC has given us, these are the guidelines which with, we, with which we will be naming the elements, so now in some cases, you know, when the names are shortened, you can write as by um, uh, we will be using that, okay, I will give you certain examples and see. Suppose if I have atomic number one element, how will I name this? I name this as U N nil. Okay, nil is for zero. N is for one. U N I U M. Okay. Next one zero two. U N nil is for zero. 
B I U M. Now, what is the symbol for this? U N U. For this, U N B. One zero three. U N mil. T R I U M. U N T. Hope students, it is clear. U N stands for one. Mil stands for zero. Three three means try, and we add I U M. So, like, why are we adding that? Basically, you know, uh, the names are shortened instead of writing the bigger ones. So, B I U M are shortened to um, B I U M by M like that. So, it's a mixture. Basically, it's a mixture of Greek and Latin roots. So, they have mixed up both the Greek and Latin words in this. So, that's you're finding it in that way. Suppose if it is one zero four, U N nil quadium u n q like that you will be writing i'll be naming it 105 how do you write u n nil pentium is u n p right like that we will be writing the different compounds let us name 106 un nil hexium symbol will be un unh for 7107 un nil septium uns 108 un nil octium uno for 109 un nil uh, enium let us write that the remaining you can write 109 is un nil enium symbol is u u e suppose if it is 111 111 is u n u n nil a u m u n n for 111 we call it as u n u n u n a u m symbol is u u u for 112 it is u n u n by u m u u b like that suppose if you have to write 120 how do you write 1 stands for un, 2 stands for by, 0 stands for nil ium, ubn, 130 un tri nilium, utn, symbol, 140 un quad nilium, uqn, 150 un pent nil um, symbol is upn. So, this is how you are going to write the nomenclature students. I am just uh, told you, try it by yourself. It is simple basically, just naming the compound based on this criteria. So, thank you for watching students. This is your uh, periodicity chapter. Thank you for watching. I will meet you again with the next chapter that is your organic chemistry.